It is a crisp, partly cloudy, and sometimes drizzly day in Corvallis. The change of colors in full bloom on a typical fall afternoon on homecoming day in Oregon. From Parker Stadium in Corvallis, Oregon, Prime Ticket presents College Football 88. Today, as USC continues its year-long athletic centennial season, the number three-ranked Trojans take on the Oregon State Beavers. Hi, everyone. I'm Rich Murata, along with former Trojan great Mike Garrett, the Trojans and the Beavers today. Both these teams off to their fastest start in many years. The Trojans at 6-0. It's their fastest start since 1975. For the Beavers, their fastest start at 3-3-1 since 1968. First of all, USC is coming off a bye. It's their second... Much. The last time they had a bye, they came back, played Oklahoma, and defeated Oklahoma. Gives them seven days, uh, two weeks to prepare for the Oregon Ducks, and they should be uh, Oregon State Beavers, so they should be real ready for this game. Oregon State, as I mentioned, seems to have reached respectability for the first time in a long time. They're competitive every game. That's right. Not only can they pass, they can run, too, and they have a good running attack. And when you have Eric Wilhelm passing, the SC defense has all they can hold. Well, you mentioned Wilhelm. There's no question he's had quite an effect. For the USC Trojans, perhaps for both these teams, really the centerpiece of their offensive machines is the quarterbacks, led, first of all, by Rodney Pete, the USC Trojan quarterback, who's having himself a sensational year, and Rodney running and passing just continues to move the Trojans up and down the field. On the other side, though, you have to look at Eric Wilhelm. He's a left-hander, Mike. Yes, and he's the mainstay of their offense, and he's, uh, although he's left-handed, he has fine touch, and he's very accurate. Well, he's having himself a very big year there. There's no question about that. Wilhelm seems to have matured this year. You know, I thought it was an interesting comment this week. Larry Smith said he thought that the Trojans were playing what he called average football. How do you feel about that, Mike? Well, as a matter of fact, he said he was an average team. And I tell you, that's the best average team I've ever seen at SC. <laughs> and they're rated number three, and they're playing awfully well. And they, like I said, they had a, a two weeks off, and they should be ready for the second half, the second drive, the last six games of their season. Well, they're going to have to be ready today. The USC Trojans going up against an Oregon State team that has upset on its mind. But the Trojans really have dominated this series. There's no question about that. They've won the last 16 years and lead overall 43-7. to There have been four ties. There's Larry Smith, the head coach of the USC Trojans. His final words to his players having already been given. He spoke momentarily with the officials, but we're just about ready to go. Larry Smith, and there's Dave Craigthorpe, who's had a pretty good impact here at Oregon State, and he has the people in this area very much fired up. The Trojans will kick off to start today's action. Quinn Rodriguez to kick for USC. And it's a short kick. Actually, it's Ron Dale kicking for the Trojans taken by an up man that's Rob Thomas and he is brought down at the 28 yard line and that's where Oregon State will put it into operation first and ten just a seven yard return by Rob Thomas we're going to take a look now as we see Eric Wilhelm come into the huddle 6'3 203 pound senior leading the offense and he is a leader there's no question about that for Oregon State the Beavers have the ball first and 10. The ball is at the 29-yard line. Long count by Wilhelm, and he gives on the first play to Chafee left side. And a little bit of a gain, about three yards up to about the 31-yard line. Pat Chafee, the fullback, brought down by Delmar Chesley of USC. Taking a look at the Oregon State offense, the backs and receivers, Taylor and Chafee will be in the backfield. Brian Hill, Rob Thomas of the wideouts, Bill Ross is the tight end. Along the line, Ken Kiff, Hector Meza, Rob Jack is the center, Pete Stepp in the right guard, Mike Bailey is the right tackle. Second down now for Oregon State. Here's the first pass for Wilhelm. It's tipped up into the air, and it is nearly intercepted and dropped. Oh, Chesley nearly had that one. And Delmar Chesley making his presence felt already, and he's a little bit disappointed. Delmar almost had this. Here we get a look here. Wilhelm looking back. He's going to his right. The ball's deflected. Tex Williams will come over and cause a little mishap with uh,
chest lead, and that's why he didn't re make the interception. All right, so the first third down situation of the day now for Oregon State, third and seven. Wilhelm, well, he got the pass to Chafee, but he's going to be far short of the first down, and just making the play defensively for USC, and so Oregon State in a play which really didn't look as though it could possibly pick up the distance needed for the first down, and the Beavers will have to punt. So on fourth and four, Mark Bennett to punt for Oregon State. Drives Cleveland, pulled her way back, all the way back to the 18. He fumbles the football and is knocked down at the 20-yard line. Jim Curitan, after that 47-yard punt, makes the tackle on Cleveland Colder. Well, we take a look at Rodney Pete now leading the Trojan offense out. The 6'2 senior. We'll have operating behind him Scott Lockwood, Leroy Holt in the back, half holder Jackson, the wideout, Scott Galbraith, the tight end. And the line, as usual, Guerrero and Barnes on the left side, Brad Leggett at center. Right guard is Mike Tucker, and Turk Marshall is the right tackle. Jackson in motion. Scott Lockwood straight up the middle and a gain of eight yards before Essera Tuaolo makes the tackle. Scott Lockwood really came coming off a great game against Washington. But if we take a look at Rodney Peake, the guy who's completed over 61% of his passes, averaging 222 yards a game now. And he's got that touchdown to interception ratio above uh, the break-even spot. It actually was below that for a few games this year. Hey, the sun peaks out here in Corvallis. A welcome sight. It was raining a little bit earlier today. From the 28-yard line, Wellman in motion. Lockwood again. First down. So the initial first down for the Trojans today. Mike Matthews making the tackle. Taking a look there at the Oregon State defense. Holder wide right and Jackson wide to the left hand side for USC. Rodney Pete, it was interesting. Rodney Pete took a look. He didn't like the look of things. He saw Jim Curitan, I think, of normally an outside linebacker ready to blitz right up the middle, Mike, and he called a timeout. Well, that's one of the schemes of defense for Oregon State is that they know they have to put pressure on Rodney Pete and Rodney. Uh, decided that he was going to pass after running two or three times straight and had to call an audible. So there are 12 minutes and 50 seconds remaining to be played in the first quarter, and it's no score yet. USC and Oregon State. First and 10 for USC on the 33-yard line. Just the start of things, 12.50 to go in the first quarter. No score yet. The Trojans and Oregon State. Very cool day in Corvallis. Leroy Holt cuts back nicely. Booms across the 40 up to the 45-yard line. Well, I never classified Leroy Holt as a cutback runner, Mike, but we saw it there. Yes, he, he ran very well. He kept his head up. But one of the things Larry Smith wanted to do after nearly beating Washington a couple of weeks ago is that he was going to pound the defense, and that's what he didn't do last week. There's a the defensive line for Oregon State. Tuolo, Vetris, and McDaniels from left to right. Linebackers, Giacomelli, Sanders, Matthews, and Curitan in. Curitan replacing the injured Scott Sanders, who underwent arthroscopic surgery just two days ago. Rodney Pete has complete to Gary Wellman. That was an interesting play there, Mike, because it looked as though Martin Chesley was reaching up and thought it might have been intended for him. Wellman is not getting up. Both receivers were in the same zone, one shorter than the other. Wellman caught the ball over uh, the grass of Chesley, but then he took a big hit, and there's line there. The tackle was made, I believe, by Teddy Johnson on the play. We'll take a look at it here, Mike, and see if we can't pick it up. But look for Chesley in front. That's right. The ball flies over Chesley's hands. There's Wellman, who gets the reception. Now he's going to take a big hit, but it looks more like a cramp 
more than anything else because this is a different surface he's been playing on. And that's Teddy Johnson, who's uh, noted for being a big hitter, delivering the blow. Teddy Johnson, who is out of Inglewood, California, and a senior in 1986, he intercepted as a sophomore. He intercepted nine passes. He was second in the nation and led the Pac-10. Larry Smith has to be a little bit concerned. Again, as he was going over uh, position by position this week, and we see Gary Wellman holding up his left leg, and he cannot put any pressure down upon it, so that will hurt the Trojans. No question about it. He felt that the wide receiving spot really was playing what he called, again, average football at this point. I don't know if he was using that as a motivational tour or not. Second and inches now for USC as Jackson comes in motion. He avoids the rush from Tuolo. He has the first down. He's up to the 35-yard line, across the 35 before he stepped out of bounds. Bruce Sanders running him out. Sanders, a 227-pound junior, but there we saw the athletic ability of Rodney P. You know, Rodney comes at you so many ways here, and he's looking downfield. He sees the one, no one open, and he just then puts on his cat-like ability and puts his sprint, sprinting wheels on, and he goes right down the field. Bruce Sanders has to push him out of bounds. He had kind of a standoff with Tuaolo on the right side, but it was rolling right. It's Trojan's total offense, which is third in the back 10 over 430 yards. Oregon State's also over 400 yards. Rockwood hit hard. The crowd really roars, but even when they stop USC, they make it look like a stop. Lockwood has fallen forward for two or three yards. Ray Giacomelli, the outside linebacker, made the stop on Scott Lockwood. Even when USC does not gain yards on their running attack, what they're designed to do is just wear that Oregon State team down. And uh, as stated before, Larry Smith was uh, kind of discouraged that he didn't do that to the Huskies, so I don't think there's going to be any question that he just wants to run at this defense until they stop him. Trojans go here with just one wide receiver this time. It is Jackson. He rolls to the right, and he fires to John Jackson, who makes the nice grab and goes out of bounds at the 21-yard line, run out by Calvin Nicholson. Calvin Nicholson best cover man for the Oregon State uh, attack. There you see stats on John Jackson. He simply went down about 10, caught the ball, picked up the first down, and John is probably possibly setting him up for maybe a bomb later. But here we go. We see the top. Here's the play. Rodney Pete throwing to Jackson, picking up the first down. I wonder today with Wellman out of there if we'll see a lot of one wide receiver as we did on that play. But now the Trojans come out with uh, two wide receivers. You see Jackson come out wide to the left. Affolter is in the game and wide right side. He's looking for Affolter. He tries to reach over a man. He does. It is a touchdown for USC. He reached right over. Teddy Johnson got the ball and scored. What a play by Eric Affolter. That's athletic ability. Now the two teams begin to push and shove each other. 21-yard touchdown for the Trojans. You know, Rodney has always said that if when in doubt, there's a one-on-one -on -one coverage on Appleder, he's going to throw the ball because he believes Appleder will come up with the reception. And what we're going to see here is that the ball, here's we're going to see where Rodney is going to be dropping straight back. I mean, he's going to look to his right, see Appleder covered by Teddy Johnson. Now here's the rule that both parties have the ball. It goes to the offensive team. Now here's the struggle. The referee has to make a decision. He calls it USC touchdown. Now there is an injured Trojan on the field. It is not Apple, but the Trojan is down as we take a look at the play once again. Ball's in the air again. Now you get a look at it. Now they have to fight for it. That's Johnson or Appholder. They give it to Appholder. I thought Pete did a nice job of looking off the defense. Looking a long time, in fact, to the left side. He's having a real problem catching the number of the player who is down. We cannot see who it is. It is not Appleton who made the catch. You know, this person, the uh, Trojan, may be hurt because that's the pushing and shoving after the, the referee call a touchdown. So he did actually could have gone right in that corner. 21 yard touchdown pass. It's John Jackson. Where there's a fight, John Jackson will be there, I promise you. And I'll tell you, that's an amazing 
series of mishaps now for the Trojans. First they lose Wellman, and now John Jackson is having trouble getting to his feet. He finally is lifted up. Well, one thing let me make note that John Jackson had a very much an upset stomach, stomach before the game, and during this series, he was not in the best of health, and this could be just as much a, a stomach flu or virus, and then you got a hit and made a double to the worst, and he's trotting off the field now and uh, under, under his own control. Well, the fact that he is able to run off the field is good news for the Trojans. But and now it? Quinn Rodriguez will attempt the point after for USC. Quinn also missed the two this year. You're right, but whenever there is a struggle, John Jackson could be in the middle of it, so that was not unusual. This one is perfect. And so the USC Trojans, very early in the football game, four minutes and four seconds into it, have taken a 7 0 lead over Oregon State. On homecoming day, the crowd uh, quieting a little bit here because the USC Trojans have gone off to a 7-0 lead over Oregon State. The Trojans taking the ball the first time they have it, marching right down the field for the touchdown. The Trojans prepare to kick off. The drive was an 80-yard drive in eight plays. Pete to Aff Poulter for the touchdown. In fact, Pete was three of three passing for 40 yards on that drive. Rob Thomas and uh, Brian Taylor are back deep to receive. Standing at about the 10 yard line. This one's gonna drive Taylor back to the seven. Avoids a man at the 20 and gets up to the 28 yard line. Nice return by Brian Taylor. And so Oregon State gets the football back, trailing now seven to nothing to USC after Junior Seau made the grab. There's Eric Wilhelm. He is second all-time in the Pac-10 now in yards gained. He has over 8,300 yards total. You see the total for this year. And what a touchdown to interception ratio he has. 13 touchdowns, only three interceptions. It's one of the reasons that the Oregon State offense has been so effective this year. It's been quite efficient that way. Not too many mistakes. Boy, they're about a plus 20 this year. The give is to Brian Taylor off left tackle. And he doesn't get much. Take a look at the Trojan defense now on the defensive line. Tim Ryan, Don Gibson, Dan Owens starting as usual. The Trojan linebackers on the outside, Michael Williams and Craig Hartsiker. Inside backers, Ross and Tuliao. And the secondary now for USC. The corners, Chris Hale, Ernest Spears, and the safeties, Cleveland Coulter and Mark Carrier. Second down and six from the 33. Oregon State trailing 7-0 to USC. Wilhelm stays in the pocket. A big hit by Chris Hale forced Rob Thomas to give up that football. One of the better ways to stop the passing team is either put pressure on the quarterback or get those receivers when they're going to catch the ball and put the big hit on them. And Chris Hale went right in there and delivered a big blow. Now we see... Wilhelm looking back there. There's Rob Thomas, and he takes the big hit. Chris Hale, I think, Mike, would like to bounce back with a big game today. He was very disappointed with the way things went for him against Washington two weeks ago. Yeah, honestly, he didn't play that badly, just circumstances. From the 33. Scott Ross really seemed to disturb the concentration of Eric Wilhelm. Ross ran up there showing blitz, and Wilhelm got up and called timeout, just like that. So the Trojans now hanging on to a 7 0 lead. We have 10 minutes and 4 seconds remaining in the first quarter of play, and when we come back, it'll be third and seven for Oregon State. Here's Dave Craigthorpe, the head coach of the Oregon State Beavers. He has them off to their best start long time back since 1968 back when they were five and two that year but three three and one bad news for the trojans gary wellman is out for the game he has suffered a sprained ankle he will not return today the trojans are going to be thin at the wide receiver spot wilhelm's pass is intercepted picked off by the trojans dwayne garner and the trojans now with a takeaway have a chance to cash in once again. 
Trojans were lacking a nickel back defense. Brought in Wayne Garner to uh, give them one more, uh, one more additional uh, defender back there. And he read the coverage very well by Wilhelm. Wilhelm drops back. He's going to look for a short coverage. You'll see number nine go right across the ball here. There he is. He picked off the ball. Great turnover. SC's been turning, uh, getting a lot of turnovers this year and putting the offense in good offensive position. And now Oregon State, as the Trojans came up to the line of scrimmage, Oregon State scored call timeout once again. So that's two timeouts, and they've burned here already, incredibly, within the first five minutes of the first quarter of play. I'll take a look at Dwayne Garner. He's a guy who was penciled in to be the starter at that corner spot this year. Was a little bit injured at the start of the season. Chris Hale moved in, took over that spot, and has not given it up. Dwayne Garner getting a chance there. Larry Smith wants to make sure that he takes every opportunity and score every time he gets a chance. He wants his team to get out of the ball game as quickly as he can because uh, two weeks ago, they had uh, Washington behind 14 nothing going into half, and something happened. Washington got live, and then it was a tough team for the Trojans. Oregon State is the kind of team that does not give up easily, though. Mike, if you recall the UCLA game that they played not long ago, Oregon State was behind 21 to nothing in that game, but came back to make a real good ball game at it. 21-14 for a while, and then they were only down 31 to 21 late in the ball game, the final minute before UCLA had a good shooting touchdown. Here's the Roy Holt, runs into his own offensive lineman, and then just adjusts and picks up big yardage. Boy, Leroy Holt picking up big yardage for USC and beginning to look again like the kind of runner that we saw earlier in the season. You know, the first couple of games, he really started out big. Well, when you have the interior line of the Trojans blocking the way they are, a fullback can run into his own blocker and still go downfield and pick up a first down. First and 10 for SC, just inside the 25-yard line. Splitbacks this time for the Trojans. Dropping a pass by Pete to Appholder and down to the 12-yard line. It is looking very easy for USC so far. Teddy Johnson on the tackle of Appholder, but the Trojans are taking what the Beavers are giving them. It's fine with them to go underneath. The Trojans have Eric Appholder coming off a four-catch game against Washington, but he's had a lot bigger games than that during the course of the year, especially that game against Arizona. They caught nine balls for 126 yards and three touchdowns. This time the Trojans put both their wide receivers out wide to the right. Lockwood spinning at the line of scrimmage. Ray Giacomelli was the man who made the stop. The Trojans have mixed up their offense attack very well, where the uh, Beavers have not stopped their running game, so when they come in any type of play action or any set, they get kind of worried because they're not too sure how they're going to stop the Trojans. There we get a look of Scott Galbraith, and he's an integral part of that offensive line where the tight end has to make key blocks, and they ain't slipping off. That's going to be a blow to the Trojan offensive block. Trojans, of course, already without the injured Paul Green, and now Scott Galbraith limping off the field. In the end zone, touchdown USC again to Eric Appholter. Boy, did he drill that one. Appholter being the great receiver he is, went right down the field, got in the end zone and sat between the defenders. Pete saw it and just threw a blue dart right there. Hit him right in the chest, touchdown. Now we get the play action because they cannot stop the SC running back so far. They get the good draw of the linebackers. There's Appholter in the end zone, touchdown Trojan. Just split the two defenders at 11-yard touchdown pass from Rodney Pete to Eric Appholder. It's 21 yards and 11 yards. Appholder now has five touchdown receptions this year. Oh, and Rodney Pete started out red hot. Kick by Rodriguez is good, and the Trojans trying to blow out Oregon State early and keep this crowd out of this game, it's USC 14, Oregon State nothing. USC Trojan Football 88 is brought to you by Volkswagen, who invites you to see the Volkswagen Fox today at your local Volkswagen dealer. And by Labatt's Blue, Canada's number one selling beer. It's blue heaven. 
Well, a very quiet crowd. In fact, the only noise you hear coming out of this crowd right now is coming out of the USC band, the Spirit of Troy, which is here. And there you see for the Trojans, Mark Preston getting ready to kick. Rob Thomas, Brian Taylor are the deep men. The Trojans leading 14 to nothing on two Rodney Pete to Eric Affolter touchdown passes. That last drive set up following the interception by Dwayne Garner of an Eric Wilhelm pass. The kick comes down to Taylor. He feels it at the nine yard line. They try to go across the field. Running laterally gives the Trojan kick coverage. He needs plenty of time to get that field, and he does not make it to the 20. Brian Taylor was running for his life that time. Tracy Butts ran around the arms of Craig Hartsiker, and now they have the ball on their own uh, about 17 yard line. But Larry Smith was very intent on getting his defense and his offensive team together and just blow this team out early and keep, get them out of the game. They have to develop their killer speed for the rest of the season. And only a nine yard return on that play. The Trojans. Hoping to improve their special teams performance if they can today. Wilhelm <laughs> over the middle. He has got his fullback, Graham Swanson. Swanson on a short game brought down by Michael Williams. Wilhelm has to get his team going. He's behind 14-0. So what he's going to do, what he does best, is play a very much a controlled pass offense. Most of the running backs throw quick hitches to the outside people just to loosen up the Trojan defense. Now it's second and four for a six-yard pickup on their first down play. Go out, looking, looking, under pressure. They've got him. Eric Wilhelm brought down by Dan Owens and uh, Tim Ryan of the Trojans. Wilhelm was looking for Lloyd Baylor outside like he was going to run a hitch. As he rotated to the wide side, he had to run the ball and he just maybe picked up a couple of yards. So it is not a sack. He actually was able to fall forward for some yardage. That's very good, Rich. It's the difference between a sack and a, uh, and a run. Oregon State looking for its first first down of the game. They had to get it on a penalty. They would not have made it. Well, Swanson, who carried the football, and he was bowled over behind the line of scrimmage. We'll wait for Gordon Reese to come on. be a first down now for Oregon State. That was Tim Ryan. He was kind of anxious, and he crossed the neutral zone. Lined up on the left side. Probably had a quick count. A change of cadence by Oregon State to drew him off. That's a very good serve. Yeah, 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 he wants to uh, put this team away as quickly as he can. Eric Wilhelm. His first interception that he suffered in the first round, round. and it's not the streak that he had. 121 consecutive passes without an interception. And then after that interception, he won another 114 passes without throwing one. That's great statistics. He had one picked off today. Shut down. Pump fake. Wilhelm is sacked this time. Junior Seau was the man in the backfield, a big play guy, and linebacker for the Trojans, just a sophomore, who has come on this year with each succeeding game to make more and more of those big plays. Chris Allen, the Trojan defensive coordinator, said they're going to have to put pressure on Wilhelm or they won't be able to stop him. Here's Junior Seau coming in with the blitz. He has to block in front of him, gets rid of him, and still makes the play. There's Junior Seau. He's a tough guy. Rush showing blitz, so does Tracy Butts, but they both drop back into coverage. Wilhelm walks it in. Thomas, and it's a first down. Nice grab by Rob Thomas, the 5'11 senior, who is leading the Pac-10 in reception and is third in the nation this year. That was his 45th catch of the season. Rob Thomas is their best receiver. 
and he's also has great hand escape concentration there you see it exhibits all those attributes and he still he makes the first down gets thrown out by uh cleveland coulter rob thomas third all-time at oregon state 125 and receptions in his career Swanson off the left side, and Trojan's diving in to stop him, but he did pick up about three yards off left tackle. Looking at the blind play of the, um, of the Beavers, they don't seem very convinced that they can run the ball against the Trojans. And one way to look at that is watch the running back, how he hits the line of scrimmage. And they're not being crisp and aggressive. aggressive. They're kind of just kind of dream walking or sleepwalking into the line. It has become quite a sunny day here in Corvallis. Looking a lot better than it was about an hour before game time when it was raining fairly hard. Out of the shotgun. Quick developing play. Wilhelm's pass is incomplete. There's a penalty in the backfield. Most likely is offensive holding. And Dan Owens is looking back at an offensive lineman. So they caught you. Pass was intended for Bryant Hill. Tex Williams had him pretty well tied up. Trojan defense this year has given up only about 90 yards a game in rushing defense, and that total defense is excellent, only 253 game yards per game. So after the penalty, Ball has moved back to the 41 yard line. It's Larry Smith, and I know he feels good about what's happening. It's 14 up, but he wants his team to stay eager and keep alert, and that's why he said that they're, they're playing like an average team. But in fact, they have great material, and they can be as good as they want to be. Greg Thorpe there wants his team to play a lot better than they have so far. Wilhelm under a big rush gets it off. The under threw his man. Scott Ross again, an excellent coverage for the Trojans. He was trying to get the football to Phil Ross, the tight end for our Oregon State. Ross on the coverage made it tough on Ross. And I'll tell you, Wilhelm was under extreme pressure. The three down linemen for USC are just controlling the line of scrimmage. That's Ryan O'Neill, I mean, Ryan and, and, and uh, Owens and Gibson. And they're just dominating the line of scrimmage, and, and uh, Wilhelm is not having much time to drop back and read the defense. Even when he's taking short drops. The Trojans have a blitz on coming with two linebackers, but Wilhelm rolls out of trouble. Gets it complete to Bryant Hill, and it's another first down. Excellent play. Eric Wilhelm really made that one happen as he rolled to his opposite side, to the right side, got the pass to Brian Hill. Chris Hale made the stop. For the Oregon, Oregon State team to really take some generation and start moving the ball offensively, Wilhelm is going to have to do the exceptional. And this time he put a little pressure on him, but he's going to step up to the cup because he has inside pressure and he sees Brian Hill downfield and he lays it right there and Hill makes a good reception. Goes out of bounds, first down. 23 yards on the play. Eric Wilhelm to Brian Hill. Hill is known as a guy who makes the tough catch. This time rolling to his left. He had a blocker in front of him and the pass is nearly picked off by Chris Hale. He's trying to get the football to Lloyd Bailey. And Chris Hale nearly had that one picked off. Chris Hale had a rough time in the Washington game as he was beaten on the play for three, uh, on the game for three touchdowns, but actually a couple of them were interception chances for Hale in that game that he just didn't get. He had the play there. He was only beaten really once, I think, by Slater in that game where he was flat out beaten. Chris Hale with four interceptions this year. Nearly at number five, Mike. That's right. To the gun now. Nice sack pass, and unbelievably, Brian Swanson drops it. One thing that happens when you start beating up a team and they start to hear footsteps is they drop balls. And the Trojans may not look like it on TV, but they are delivering hits. 
They're trying to be discouraged the offense of the Beavers to the point where they just make errors like this, Rich. Swanson delivered a little punishment to himself there. He hit himself in the head. He was so upset with himself. He's right there, but he knows he has the three Trojans are there to deliver a blow, and he just drops the ball. So now it's third and ten from the 37-yard line. Oregon State has converted half of its third down conversion so far today. They trail by 14. Quick drop by Wilhelm. His pass knocked down, nearly intercepted by Tex Williams. Well, I'll tell you, Wilhelm today has had one pass picked off. He's had two or three others that have been close to being intercepted. And this is a guy who comes into the game having been intercepted only three times this year. Yes, Tex, Tex Williams had a good play there where he actually just comes up field and takes the angle away from the quarterback, throwing the ball to the receiver. He almost picks it off, but Wilhelm is under pressure. I think he's kind of nervous, and he hasn't settled down into his game yet. They're in punt formation. Look out. They do a lot of things sometimes. They fake, and, they, and that's exactly what they're going to do here. Schiestel, who's a quarterback, is tackled, brought down behind the line of scrimmage, but there is a flag down. Just as I was mentioning to you, any time that Oregon State is inside the 50-yard line and in punt formation, you never know what to expect from them. Intentional grounding is called against Oregon State. The Trojans will get it. The guy who was back was a sometimes punter, Nick Schiestel. He's their second-string quarterback. So he was rolling to the right. They were going to try to get the first down, but there was no chance. John Gibson was the defender. He played the nose man there, and he got inside, and he's making the tackle on Chisto. And he keeps his head up and prevents a uh, big game for the Oregon, uh, Oregon State Beavers. Of course, with the grounding penalty, there was a loss of down. In addition to the yardage, so USC will start with great field position on this drive. They'll start at the 49-yard line. Last time they got the football, they had to drive only 35 yards following the interception. Great when you only have to negotiate half the field. He play faking under some pressure. Throws it long. He's got John Jackson. Nice job of getting back to cover on the play by Andre Harris. Andre Harris, the free safety. There's a penalty on the play, and I think possibly that that uh, Rodney Keith either went past the line of scrimmage or there's offensive holding on the on the uh, offensive line of the Trojans. Keith had the option to run or pass, and he selected the pass to John Jackson, who just entered the ball game. That is the first incompleted pass so far thrown by Rodney Keith. Saw obviously John Jackson back in the game once again, and the holding penalty against USC will set it back to the Trojans' 41-yard line. Now we get a shot the quarter. There's Rodney P. And you're going to see he has a, just a funnel right up the field if he wants to take it. But being a big gambler than he is, he saw John Jackson down the left sideline and tried to make the big play. First and 20 now for SC. Lockwood. The right side, stacked up at the 43. SC shows a, shows a lot of offense and a lot of the confidence in their offensive line where they're more than first and 10, they're almost first and 20, and they're going to go run the ball and just methodically move it down the field, and they believe they can pick up a first down, moving the, move the ball that way. Esara Tua Olo made the tackle on Lockwood. 4 15 remaining first quarter, 14 to nothing, USC over Oregon State. Trojans came up to the line of scrimmage and were sent back by the officials. The official says we can we can have our own timeout sometimes. It'll be great. This will be a second and 17 situation. Actually, it's about 16 and a half. Pressure, Pete evades the pressure. Did F. Holter hang on to that one? Oh, what a catch. What a catch. He is coming over like a crossing pattern about 15 yards down. Rodney Pete needs 
drives him too far. He sticks his left hand out, one-handed, mind you. Catches the ball, pulls it in, falls down, no fumble for completion. And the Trojans about one foot, a one yard from a touch, a first down. There it is. Watch his one hand go out. Is that, oh, is that, oh. Incomplete, incomplete. But it, that put him at a great uh, display of talent, and the referees gave it to him. Amazing grab by Affolter. Leroy Holt, that's Mr. First Down, right into the middle, crashes across the 40 and down to about the 38-yard line. Pella McDaniels making the stop. Rich on that last play, the ball didn't hit the, hit the uh, uh, surface. He uh, completed the pass, but Affolter's body must have ordered off to the uh, nearest referees when they couldn't see it, so they gave the Trojans a, first, uh, a third down and one to go, and it looks like the Trojans picked it up on the last play. It is a first down for USC, so the Trojan march continues. The Trojans have reached the 38. 316 remaining in the first quarter, 14 to nothing USC. There's happiness on the Trojan sideline. Things are going good, and the luck is with you. Play fake, he's rolling right. Over the middle to Lockwood, breaks out of a tackle, and down to the 26-yard line. Great job by Scott Lockwood before Larry Vladek, the junior strong safety, finally brought him down. Lockwood may not be the, be the most graceful receiver, but boy, he catches this ball and then he shows you the real toughness that he has because he loves to hit people. And there he makes the reception. Watch him. One, two, three. It takes at least three guys to bring him down. Down to the 26, Rodney Peters. <laughs> Perfect today. He gets it to Lockwood. And Lockwood brought down by Tom Petrus, the nose tackle, most experienced player on that line. Started his career, in fact, in 1985 at Idaho. Played some games there, transferred, had to sit out 1986, but has been playing the last two years at Oregon State. Ball is at the 27 yard line now. You know, Rodney Pete has to be six of seven because he did throw an interception down the field to John Jackson early in his drive. Pass bobbled and... Well, let's see the call. Incomplete. <laughs> what a pass was intended for Martin Chesley. He was bobbling it as they went. They thought that they might have an interception on the play. Now listen, if you believe in uh, kind of tossing the ball and playing the... Uh, I can go seek with. Here it is. There's Chesley. Now John Jackson comes by. He has a chance to get it. Oops. I think I do have it. Oops. No, I don't have it. He drops the ball. Now it is third down for USC. Third down and 11. Trojans getting at about a 58% clip. Running to the first down, but anything over 50% is outstanding. Pete. That holder. No, he was out of bounds. The hit applied by Andre Harris, the senior free safety, and very likely the best defensive player on this football team. Number 26, Andre Harris. Maybe that holder did catch the ball because he's running an out pattern. He's about 15 to 17 down. Pete's there. Now let's see if we can see his feet. We determine if he got one foot in. I think he did. And then he gets hit and uh, he forced out. Should have been a completed pass. Fourth down. fourth down now for USC and they are going for it. And it's fourth and 11. Rodney Pete in a deep shotgun. Looks almost like a short punt for me. Takes a deep drop, has a man in his face. No. His pass is incomplete. Skip on a hop to Eric Affolter. Dr. Milley, number 99, put pressure on Pete, so he had to throw the ball quickly. The Oregon, Oregon State crowd is getting in the game after a good display of defense from their defensive team. Now this crowd is roaring. They are getting into it, Mike. You're right. Oregon State really needed to stop USC there, make a stand somewhere. That brought the fans here at Parker Stadium alive. A minute 47 to go in the first quarter. It is 14 to nothing in favor of USC. Oregon State at the 22-yard line. 
hand up straight up the middle to Chafee, spins off up to the 30-yard line. The Trojans are big on not letting Oregon State just get any type of running game going, and Chafee picked up uh, maybe four yards of best first down running play so far, but he had to pay the price because there are three Trojans putting their helmets right in his back when he turned up to gain the yards. There is Eric Wilhelm you're looking at. He threw for 353 yards this year against Colorado, and believe it or not, threw for over 300 yards against UCLA as well. Now he operates out of the shotgun. On second down. Over the middle of the pass is incomplete. Oregon State, they run like a, a option type of offense where the defender, the pass receiver goes downfield. Maybe we get a good look at their offensive line. You have to protect Wilhelm, but when the receiver goes downfield, he has the option to go one way or the other, and Wilhelm must make the read, and so far, they have not been effective in, in getting that act together where the receiver can get the ball in time to make a reception. Well, they had Chafee running a little curl pattern out of the backfield. He's a good receiver normally. Yes. Quick drop by Wilhelm, he locks it out there to Rob Thomas. Another completion to Rob Thomas. His second of the game and 46th of the campaign, Chris Hale defending. Rob Thomas, who you look at, is the son of a former NFL player, Mike. Aaron yes. Thomas. Yes, he was. And Craig Thorpe is yelling, saying, good play here. And Wilhelm actually felt the blitz coming, so it's one-on-one -on -one coverage, Chris Hale with Rob Thomas. And here's Chris making the hit, but Thomas makes the reception first down. year he is having that was his 46th reception he's about to go over the 600 yard mark Richard burned there I can't believe that they burned a third time out I could tell oh, you a ready. funny story about this you know Rob Thomas uh, his father's Aaron Thomas who played for the New York Giants many years back and when I was you won't believe this but in 1961 when I was being recruited across the country uh, Oregon State asked me to come here and the guy who recruited me was Aaron Thomas the father of Rob Thomas and I'll never forget he told me that uh, it doesn't rain in Oregon <laughs> well I don't believe that one yeah well, it may be hard to believe but you get a real double header at the Coliseum next week not only do you get the USC Trojans and the Cal Bears but you also get the Beach Boys in concert live right after the game and a limited number of tickets are still available Wilhelm steps out of trouble flips it out in front of him to Chafee and Chafee up to the 45 yard line but short of the first down well short of the first down they need to get to the Trojan 48 so the first quarter has come to an end here at Parker Stadium. It's homecoming for Oregon State, but right now it's USC 14, the Beavers nothing. USC leading the Oregon State Beavers 14 to nothing as we get ready for the start of the second quarter. The Trojans scoring twice in the first quarter on Rodney P to Eric Appholter touchdown passes, the first one covering 21 yards and the second covering 11 yards. The Trojans have lost Gary Wellman today to an ankle injury. Trojans up here today. Their offense already operating without Aaron Emanuel and Stephen Webster running backs. They're sitting out today. Big rush by Junior Seau. Man, Wilhelm really stays in that pocket. And a pass completion to Brian Hill. I don't know how. <laughs> he didn't have much pocket to operate out of, Mike. You know, Wilhelm looked like a, a uh, center in a basketball game where he's in between the crowd looking for a feed off. He sees Brian Hill downfield, he throws the ball. It just shows you how great he is and how he keeps his head up. Brian Hill comes out now. Hill last year had the longest reception of his career against USC. A 45-yarder. Hill have hands the ball to Chafee. He spins off a tackle in the backfield. Goes across the line of scrimmage to pick up the first down for Oregon State. Junior Seau making the stop. So the Trojans leading 14 to nothing as we take a look at the stat sheet for the first quarter. Trojans with the edge in all of the offensive categories. First downs, rushing, passing. The total yardage 147 for SC, 93 for Oregon State. The Trojans of course had that interception, that turnover which 
set them up for their second touchdown. Play fake by Wilhelm. That Tanner wants to roll back that other way now. Run it. He's run out of bounds at the 40-yard line. It was Brian Tuliao who ran him out. The last pickup of a first down for the five. team was a confidence goal. They were third and one. They chose to run the ball, not pass it. Chaffee made the first down. Now it comes right back where Wilhelm has confidence in his offensive line. He picks up another big, big gainer. And I think uh, we may have a game here because Wilhelm may have confidence in the offensive line. Believe me, that maybe they can block the Trojan defensive uh, front of three. Wilhelm looks like he avoids the sack much better than he did last year. Comes it off into the middle to Ross. Steps out of a tackle, out of another one down to the 21 yard line. Ernest Spears finally brings him down, but Phil Ross, the junior tight end, was really rambling on that play right over the middle. Quick developing play seemed to be what's working today for Oregon State. As you get confidence, you can play better. And there's Phil Ross right over the middle. He's the tight end. He really has professional dimensions. He's about 6'4", 230, runs like a 4'6", 40. He's a quite a specimen. He shows you what kind of athlete he is on that play. 19 yards on the pass play. First down, Oregon State. Pitch back, fumble. Trojans have got it. Scott Ross made the recovery. Fumble by Brian Taylor on the pitch. Recovered by Scott Ross. The Trojans look like they might end up batting it out of bounds, but Ross got it just before it did. The referee gave him a liberal call because it could have been a question that Scott picked it up on out of bounds. And they don't do this very much. Oregon State but pitches the ball. There is a fumble. That's one of the things that happens when you put the ball like on a pitch play. And there's Scott Ross coming across and picking up the ball. It's a question whether he was out, out of bounds. Or they give it to the Trojans. Well, the thing that Oregon State has so dramatically turned around this year is the turnover takeaway ratio. But they turned it over twice today. That's Jeff Brown for USC over the middle. Brown is brought down by Ray Giacomelli. The Trojans come right back at you. They say, well, look, you move the ball on us, we'll come right at you right in the heart of your defense because we believe we can move the ball. Coach Larry Smith said this week that he felt that they got away a little bit too much from their fullbacks running the football in the last couple of weeks, and he was going to go back this week to giving the fullback the ball more. You remember early in the first part of the season, the first couple of games, how much the fullbacks were getting the ball, and this time it was Ricky Irvin's in the ball game for USC, the tailback, he crossed the 25 to the 26-yard line. Scott Ross for USC, he's kind of a wild man. Yes, he is. He's also a very good football player, and he's kind of the guy that kind of represents what SC is all about. It's that guy who's really tough and wants to play. Harry Vladek made the stop. The Trojans bring in Calvin Holmes now in the tailback. Ricky Irvins comes out. We also go with two, two tight ends. And Giacomelli, a man who is making his presence felt in almost every play, is there to make the stop. The Trojans decided to go with a power set with two tight ends, put one man wide, and Giacomelli, which they do very well on the, on the Oregon State defenses, they make deals and come in and find a penetration. Giacomelli takes on a defender, gets up and makes the tackle. Great play. Chris Spurl will punt now for USC. Spurl is averaging just under 39 yards a punt this year. He is standing on his 11-yard line. Reggie Hubbard is back to field the punt for Oregon State. Everything goes well for the for Oregon State. They will have great field position. Line drive kick, returnable for Hubbard. At the 40, gets it up to the 43, but the Trojans kick coverage getting down there pretty quickly. That was Jeff Brown to make the tackle. Nice bit of uh, kick coverage by Jeff Brown. 33-yard punt for Spurl. And they needed someone like Jeff Brown to get back down there very quickly. Dave Craigcorp will not let his team give up. Hey, Rich, he's he believes in the, in the past, but he also is trying to institute the running, and that's, and that's why they're so good this year. 
Rodney Pete has completed his first seven passes, missed in his last three. As we take a look at Dave Craigthorpe's career, an assistant at BYU, Idaho State. He went on as a head coach to Utah State, and now here. Pass over the middle to Rob Thomas. He fumbles the football. Was he down already or not? We have no signal from the officials. Thomas had it. He was down. He was down. It is a first down. And that pass combination of Eric Wilhelm to Rob Thomas is working today. And that's the duet that actually controls this offense for Oregon. Now you can see possibly he lost the ball before he hit the ground, but the referees called it dead at that spot. Certainly didn't look to me as though the ground caused that fumble. Looked like an arm reached in there and stripped the football. Chafee. We pick up about uh, two yards down to about the 39 yard line. You know, the referees have a bad day just like football players, and I can think of a three or four calls today. They're going one way or the other, when in fact it was the play was uh, dead or incomplete, but we got to allow them to be human, too. And you don't see that very often. What's that, officials being human? No, making mistakes. <laughs> <laughs> At least not so many in one game. Just inside the 39. Bad snap from center. Wilhelm will try to chase it down. He can't do it. There is a flag on the play, and they were whistling it dead. Well, Oregon State looks like it has a case of the jitters here. You know, that's one thing. It looks like, well, what's going wrong? But when you start hitting people, and you make me think about pain besides just running the ball and executing the block. You'll have turnovers like that or mistakes. Here we get a look at it. And it was the, the team is moving. You see back to a motion there, and the ball just takes over uh, Wilhelm's head. And... Uh, the referees called it dead. Now they're, they're marked, they mark up five yards against the offense of Oregon State. It looked to me as though the center had stood almost straight up by the time he snapped the football. It just shows you sometimes you got to snap with your legs straight, even though you should be bent. All right, they mark it back to the 44. called a great play. He knows the Trojans want to put pressure on Wilhelm. And what he'll do is he's going to run a, a uh, slow kind of a screen to the left. He makes it like a draw. He goes to Chafee, who's most effective when he's out in the flank and has the ball and can run. There he is. He's a tough guy. Takes a hit there, but he's going to pick up the first down for the Oregon State Beavers. Wilhelm does a nice job of inducing the rush up until the final second before letting go of the football. Too high for Chafee. Chafee has to pay for it. Boy, Michael Williams is winding him up. He took him out of there. You know, football's a tough game, but even uh, Chafee knows when you play the game that, hey, nothing's uh, malicious at all. And Michael Williams put a good hit on him. The ball was overthrown. He taps him in and say, good play. And that's always great to see in this game. But you come back with your eyebrow raised a little at your quarterback for leaving you open to that kind of a yes, hit. You do. He says, that was his fault, that was your fault, Will. Now get the ball down. Yeah. Would you throw it a little lower, please? Cross a man in motion. Rush from behind. like uh, Rob Thomas was hit a little too soon. The ball was still in flight and he couldn't possibly make the reception. And I think Craig Thorpe is kind of upset with that. Now, we see Wilhelm looking and being as nifty as he is all day and he's just really looking around. There is the ball. See the defender put pressure on his receiver. But no penalty was called. Wilhelm felt that pressure from behind from Dan Owens and got rid of the ball just in time. Third down now. Quick release to the left side. 
Nice play. Tracy Butts came up to make the stop before he could break free for a first down. Brian Taylor is just starting to get ahead of steam up. It's the same play that gave him a first down earlier in that series. And Junior say after a lot of pressure on Wilhelm to make him get rid of the ball a little too early and didn't get the, the wall to the left like he had before. So now it is fourth down, and Troy Bussinich is going to attempt a 43-yard field goal. Spotted at the 33. He is 9 of 12 this year, and he has kicked one as long as 45, so this is not out of his range. Pops it up there. No good. Wide right. He had the foot, but went wide right. And so, with 8.49 remaining in the second quarter, it's USC 14, the Beavers nothing. From the 26, first and 10 for USC. Rodney Pete might be checking off at the line of scrimmage. Now he gives the ball to Ricky Irvins. Nice hole for Irvins, straight up the middle. He was quick and ducking right through it. Irvins brought down by Andre Harris. There's a picture of Rich, Richie Irvins. Ricky Irvins hasn't been playing very much, but the picture should really should be on Brad Leggett, Mark Tucker, and Daryl Marshall because they have just blew a hole in the right side and let him pick up that eight yards. So a good first down pickup now for USC. They need just about a yard and a half to get the first down, so it's a good uh, play calling down here for the Trojans. And they give it to Jeff Brown and he rumbles forward out past the 40 yard line. Put him down, put the ball on the ground, and let's play in the trenches. And that's what the Trojans are doing right now. Larry Smith knows that when his team is running the ball well, they can control the line of scrimmage and the ball game. Larry Smith, of course, tremendously successful in his entire career. 80, 59, and 3, but at USC especially, the 14 and 4 records is taking over after a fine career at Arizona. Wide right, John Jackson to the left. Deep looking deep. He's going for Apple. That's got to be pass interference. Yeah, Teddy Johnson, no question about it. Teddy Johnson reached out and grabbed Apple with a hand, pulling on his jersey from behind to make sure that he wasn't going to get beat for a touchdown. Teddy Johnson called for an obvious pass interference. And that's that's a smart play there because Teddy Johnson's obviously beat here. He just lays the ball right, th right into Affolder's hand, but Alfred never got a chance to get to there because Teddy says, you can beat me, but you won't get a touchdown. You know, he's covering Affolder, Teddy Johnson is, because he's the quicker of the cornerbacks, but he's having a tough day. Now the Trojans were just about to have another touchdown on a Pete to Affolder pass. There's the pass interference call now, so an automatic first down for USC. The Trojans have reached the Oregon State 44-yard line. 7.46 remaining until halftime. 14 to nothing, the Trojans out in front. Trying to add to that lead now. Pete with excellent protection, dumps it off to Urbans. Looking for something to develop for him. Nothing really did. He was trying to run behind Dan Barnes, and Larry Malatic made the tackle. Only a three-yard pickup on the pass to Ricky Irvins. Ricky Irvins is uh, really a quick ball carrier. And Malatic came up and saw him that he's setting up to the left side and just stayed with him and made the tackle. Made it look fairly simple. This is the most playing time Irvins had in weeks. Ball. Bangs forward for five more, down to the 35-yard line. Bruce Sanders made the tackle. Bruce Sanders has a twin on this team, Scott Sanders. They both uh, were starting linebackers, but Scott Sanders had arthroscopic surgery a couple of days ago, so is not playing today. It was Bruce Sanders who made the tackle. You know, there's some good genes in that family. Not very often get two brothers playing uh, uh, outside linebackers for one team. Sanders, by the way, was a high school teammate of the Trojans' John Guerrero.
Jeff Brown carries Teddy Johnson about five yards with him. That's just hard running, excellent blocking at the point of attack. And the Trojans are moving the ball. The Trojans look really, Mike, like they can get four or five yards at will. Good shot of Rodney Pete, and it's just the basic uh, right off tackle with the fullback. Good line blocking, and the, and the fullback keeping his head up and running as hard as he can. So Jeff Brown picking up good yardage for USC. He really showed his power on that one as Teddy Johnson kind of jumped on him for the ride. There's Pete. Goes to the right side. Affolter is waiting for him, but he can't make the catch. Coming up from behind to defend on the play is Andre Harris. He's a guy who's usually always around the ball, whether it be on the ground or in the air. Andre Harris, aggressive hard hitter on this team, leads the team in tackles by a wide margin, leads the team in interceptions with three. While at Contra Costa College a couple of years ago, he led the nation with 11 interceptions as a cornerback. At eight, when he switched to free safety, that's where he's playing right now. Irvin's quick to the line. And another five yards. The Trojans have decided to make it a very simple game. Let's see who's the tougher of the two teams. And Phil McDaniels, the uh, defensive end for the Beavers, is one of the real tough ball players on the defensive uh, front line for the Beavers. And there he takes on two guys. And he's not going to stop until he hears the whistle, and he still goes. He's about 6'4", about 274, and quite a rusher. It is third and six for SC. Pete rolling left. And a pass. Well, there's a misread on that play. Jackson was heading it upfield into the end zone. we just mentioned uh, Pelham McDaniels, the junior out of San Jose. He missed the second game of this year against San Jose State. He really wanted to play in that one because he's from there. He had been on medication for a thyroid disorder, which he's had over the last year, and had taken a couple of doses of the medicine, which has a lot of adrenaline. And then he drank a slurping, and uh, the cold of which shocked his heart. It started fibrillating. He had to be hospitalized and missed the game, which, like, broke his heart, but he lived through it. And the next week, he was player of the week in the Pac-10 defensively. And the field goal is good. Quinn Rodriguez with the field goal for USC and a very long one for him. And the Trojans now have gone off to a 17 to nothing lead over the Oregon State Beavers. Tuesday night, it's your call. We'll take a look at the history and the pageantry surrounding the Breeders' Cup, the biggest day in horse racing, and racing expert Jim Peden will be our special guest. You'll get an insider's view of the Breeders' Cup Tuesday live at 9 o'clock. Different time now, 9 o'clock on It's Your Call. Trojans out in front, a lot of smiles on the Trojan sidelines. Quinn Rodriguez has just kicked a 42-yard field goal. It is not his longest of the year. He did have a 45-yarder earlier this season. But he got that one through from 42, and the Trojans now leading it 17 to nothing. Mark Preston teamed the ball up to kick off. You know, this is one of the games, Rich, where uh, the team that's losing shouldn't feel that bad because they really have stopped themselves. They've been moving the ball very well. The Trojans have not stopped them. And, and Wilhelm should tell them in the offensive team, hey, let's not worry. We can still have a second half. But better yet, we have five minutes in this quarter. We can still score. Oregon State has done some good things today. The passing combination of Wilhelm to Rob Thomas has been excellent. But turnovers have cost the Beavers today. The kick goes to Brian Taylor. He fields it at the eight yard line, looking for a lane up the right side. He's got it, he jukes a man at the 35. He's up to the 39 yard line. Nice return by Brian Lane. You can really see that lane open up on the right side for him. Junior Seau made the tackle, but again, Larry Smith is not going to be happy. His kick coverage teams just have not been good this year. They have not, and Brian Taylor takes advantage of it. He keeps his head up, and being as loose as he is, he's going to oh, get almost goal, and that's Rob Thomas, who's also a pretty good ball player himself, who gets in his way, and Taylor just keeps pushing forward. 
Good diving stop by Junior Seau from behind. A 32-yard kick returned by Taylor. Now good field position to start for Wilhelm. His pass over the middle is complete to Phil Ross. Ross bangs through one man. And through another one and all the way down to the Georgia 41-yard line. Boy, Phil Ross, when he gets it going, he is tough to bring down. He's a great athlete, and this is the second time that he's gotten the ball today, and each time he gets it, he shows you what he's all he's all about. Because he takes three hits here, he doesn't want, you don't wrap me, I won't come down, people. Now I'm going to cart, cart you about three or four yards and really get my team up. Ooh, Mark Carrier was the guy who finally brought him down, but watch as Mark wraps him up here, how long he has to, to go before he can finally get him down. That's a good five yards. First down, Oregon State, pass over the middle, across again. Puts two men down to the 30-yard line. It's a simple football where they just send everybody deep to lay the tie in and let him just kind of lose right over the middle. Wilhelm makes the read, throws it to his big tight end, and lets Bill Ross do what he's be best, and that is just run over people. Ross caught 56 passes last year. That is a lot for a tight end in the Pac-10. And a first down for Oregon State. The Beavers down by 17. The pass is incomplete. Again, that's the second one that's really been just dropped on Eric Wilhelm, victimized by his receiver. Greg Thorpe is really good because Wilhelm is making a good read the last three plays. That last one is what's been hurting the, uh, the Beavers because they'll move the ball right downfield. Wilhelm get overconfident, try and throw the ball and force it in a zone. And luckily, that ball was uh, incomplete. Lloyd Bailey is the new receiver, number five you see in the game. is skipping off to go wide right. They put Rob Thomas wide left, and now Ross, the tight end, they also put out in a slot to the left. And Wilhelm just throws this one away. Under pressure, he didn't see anything opening, so he decided not going to have a disaster strike on this play and just got rid of it. Yeah, that play may look like it's wasted, but it shows you Wilhelm is getting the grip on himself. Or he's been forcing that the first uh, uh, two quarters, and now he says, "I'm not going to, I'm not going to force it. I'm just going to take." And Larry Smith knows that Wilhelm is getting right back in the ball game. He's going to be dangerous. Eric Wilhelm, third in the history of the Pac-10 total offense. He, was the, he has a good chance of catching, in fact, Jim Plunkett today second place. Now Wilhelm under pressure. Here comes Randy Horde. Horde's got it by the ankle, but he got rid of it anyway to Trey Nicholson. And Nicholson gets down to the 23-yard line. The Beavers have done some good things today. Tracy Butts bringing down Trey Nicholson. But on a couple of occasions, they've reached down here deep into USC territory and been unable to cash in. You want to see a good athlete. His head is up, and he's always game. He's a great competitor. Throws to Tracy, uh, Trey Nicholson gets hit, but Wilhelm is just sticking in there, and he says, I'm going to fight you, Trojans, all the way. All right, this time they say, forget about the field goal attempt. We're going to go for it. Wilhelm marches up to the line of scrimmage. Need three yards. Quick pass over the middle. Complete. First down, Oregon State. Down to the 14-yard line goes Rob Thomas once again. Ernest Spears brings him down. It's a simple play where Rob Thomas kind of runs the lay over the middle, and the Trojans been very active. They cover their zones, but they can't cover the guy short. Wilhelm makes the read. It's Thomas right in the chest. First down. Three minutes to go until halftime. First and ten for Oregon State. The Beavers have played better than a 17 to nothing score would lead you to believe. Wilhelm looked to me like he was just throwing it away. There was excellent coverage by Michael Williams on the intended receiver, Trey Nicholson. He was under big pressure again, so he just got rid of it. That's right, 99, Tim Ryan was right on him. Hands up, coming right in his face, and he just had to get rid of it. Ball is at the 14. It's really turned out to be quite a lovely day here in Corvallis. Second round, the 14. It's a big series for Oregon State because if they can score and going in, they'll be ready to play the second half. Wilhelm. Will help. Ross. Michael Williams brings him down. The pass is directly over the middle. 
tonight seem to be continuing play after play to be the thing that is hurting USC. Not only are they running over the middle, they're on a delayed count. Where everyone's running deep, and you'll see the back coming right out of the backfield, and Wilhelm will just then look at the tight end there and catch the ball. Very simple, very tough to defend. So it's another third down situation now for Oregon State. Third and three. Crowd in an uproar. Scott Rush. Here he comes on a blitz. He throws over the middle. Touchdown, Oregon State. Rob Thomas scores. Scott Ross was coming on a blitz. Then he backed off and came again, but it was a little bit late. Scott Ross didn't time the blitz perfectly. Wilhelm read it. He knew the, uh, his, the drop Thompson was coming right over the middle, so he just clamps it in there. The guy's wide open. When you blitz, you better cover man-to-man -man and do a good job. A seven-yard touchdown pass from Eric Wilhelm to Rob Thomas. The extra point by Bussinich is good. And so we've got a ball game on our hands. Parker Stadium, 155. Let's go in the half, 17 to 7, SC. Today's game is brought to you by Great Western's family of companies with over $30 billion in assets, 100 years strong, will always be there. And by Carl's Jr. Restaurant. Try the Western Bacon Cheeseburger only at Carl's Jr. The choice is yours. And by Michelin, because so much is riding in your tires. Now the Oregon State Beavers are on the board. They went 61 yards in nine plays. Excellent looking drive. Wilhelm to Rob Thomas, the seven yard touchdown pass, completing the drive. And so now it is 17 to seven in favor of USC. Also keep in mind that Oregon State missed a field goal in this game. And they also fumbled it about the USC 20 and gave the ball back to the Trojans at that point when it appeared as though they might score. So Oregon State, you can see really, Mike, that this program is making progress. I mean, the Trojans may go on to a one-sided victory today, but this looks like a much better football team. I don't think it will be one-sided. And straight up the middle on the kickoff for the Trojans. And across the 25 to the 26 yard lines comes Calvin Holmes. 17 to seven, USC will be right back. 17 to seven, USC, ball at the 26 yard line, first down for the Trojans. Misdirection play now, and the ball goes to Scott Lockwood for USC. Trojans had people from the right side pulling to the left, and Lockwood following him through. On that last drive, Wilhelm did, did just great, a great play selection, where he just threw, every pass he threw, Rich, was no more than six or seven yards downfield. Very much ball control. The Trojans going to have to do something to discourage this team before the second half. Off on the left side this time goes Leroy Holt. The Trojans again going to try to play some power football here if they can and get their offense going once again in that fashion. That's the hallmark of USC. Well, this year in particular because Smith knows that when they run the ball well, they just beat the other team down on the ground. And so far, Oregon State's not tired because they have not sustained a real big drive and run attack and only because they haven't chose, uh, chosen to be that way. We're inside the final minute of the first half now. There's Lockwood picks his way along the line. He's up close to the first down. It's close. The Oregon State players pointing in the opposite direction, but everybody points, of course, <laughs> football. Esara Tuaolo makes the stop, born in Honolulu, and he said he came to Oregon State because Corvallis is small, friendly, homey, and green, just like his home in Hawaii. And he says it's not too cold either, so I guess he, uh, there's green everywhere, particularly where you have a lot of rain, and as you said earlier, it was raining, now it's sunny, and it's looking sunny for the Beavers because they're playing very tough at this moment. Let's see, the, the first down accomplished for USC. They try anything, 39 seconds remaining in the first half. They split half Holter and Marlon Washington wide right. Perhaps John Jackson can't go anymore. He was sick earlier. It's Mike Manji. He's rolling out, big pressure, big pressure, gets rid of it, throws, and it is complete to Eric Appholter, who is beginning to have one of those days today. Yes, and there's a penalty flag for
strong. Appholter appeared to be a little shaken up after making that catch. And he's pointing to his right shoulder. Holding is called against USC. Calvin Nicholson on the stop of Appholter. Well, if Appholter goes out, that would just about sweep it today with Wellman being lost to a sprained ankle. John Jackson coming out before due to the fact that he apparently was sick. And now Appholter comes out. And that could be three for three as far as the Trojan playing receivers go. This year anyway, now they play on this very tough surface. I really think Wellman's injury has been a result of the surface and now Affolder falling down. He hurts his shoulder. Boy, that is unbelievable. John Jackson has jumped up. He is standing by the coaches now. And they're right next to Rodney Peet. Picked right to the right. You see Affolder. He looks fair now, like he's in good shape. He's going back in the game. The Trojans have lost momentum and control of this ball game. And the Beavers must feel very good going into the uh, dressing room after the first half. And they feel they can beat the Trojans. And if I were they, I would think that too. This is similar in a sense to the game that Oregon State played against UCLA. And that it looked like UCLA was going to blow them out. It was 21-0 early in that game. But Oregon State came back. Played very fine football that day. Made it hard for UCLA, although the Bruins eventually won 38 to 21. But Appholder, perhaps that artificial turf did come into play there, Mike. The Trojans haven't played on artificial turf this year. As you know, it is not a pleasant experience when you have to play on the turf. Yes, and then we had a shot of Larry Smith, a pretty young lady from USC. And Larry knows that this is the same thing that happened to him two weeks ago against. Uh, Washington Huskies, they're leading, and then they let the Huskies get back in the game, and they had their hands full of the second half, and this could be the same way this second half. Marlon Washington wide right, and to the left. He gives the ball to the fullback, Holt, and Holt struggles up the middle to the 34-yard line, so the Trojans quite obviously now, and Holt is brought down by Tom Petras, willing to let the clock run out here on the first half and get into the locker room with a 10-point halftime lead. The teams begin running off the field, and the fans here afford the Oregon State Beavers with a fine round of applause because their Beavers are very much in the football game at this point as they trail USC 17 to seven. USC is leading Oregon State 17 to 7 as we get ready to start the second half of play. The Trojans will receive to start the second half. You're looking at Troy Musinich, who missed a field goal earlier in this game. Otherwise, Oregon State could be even closer than the 10-point margin facing them right at this time. For USC, the Trojans will have deep to receive. Calvin Holmes. Also Ricky Irving. Mark Rogers is that third deep receiver for the Trojans, number five. The Trojans are choosing to go with three deep men on this kickoff return. 17 to seven SC. And they're gonna kick it to Holmes. He takes it at the goal line and he stepped back one step into the end zone. He had a foot back there already. And he decides to down it there rather than risk running it out. So the Trojans will take over the ball first and 10 at their own 20 to start the second half of play. In the first half, the statistics were quite even. The first downs, 14 to 12 for SC, total yards 217 to 206 for Oregon State. Time of possession, about 15 minutes for each team. But those two turnovers for Oregon State have been very costly. Gives the ball to Scott Lockwood. He has a huge hole to run through on the right side. And Lockwood has 10 yards on his first carry of the second half. Boy, did the Trojan offensive line fire out there. Rich, if the Trojan offensive line doesn't take control of the, of the trenches and let their running backs get holes, and like Lockwood is going here and making big chunks off the defense of the Beavers, they're going to be in for a dogfight. They have to control the tempo of the game to keep the Beavers down because they pass so well. First down for SC. We nearly did not get the handoff to Leroy Holt. Pete spinning around. And that play, the timing just wasn't quite right. As you take a look at Pellin McDaniels, 
player of the week defensively in week number three of this season when Oregon State defeated California. Very quick defensive end. Oregon will stop you one play because they gamble. They know they can't play you man for man defensively, so they'll make all kinds of deals and try and confuse you. But that shouldn't kind of taunt you. You should just continue to run very consistent ball control offense against that defense. Half holder wide right, John Jackson wide left for USC. Second and eight. Leroy Holden wrapped up. Wrapped up by Ray Giacomelli, who's played himself a fine ball game today. Giacomelli had a brother, Dave, you might remember here at Oregon State, was a co-captain here just a couple of years ago. Giacomelli got help from Tom Vetris on the tackle. Giacomelli originally signed a letter of intent with Washington. Didn't play for the Huskies, though, in 84. Went to JC in 85, then right here to Oregon State. Third down play for USC, third and seven. Blitz is on, he reads it, gets it off to Marlon Washington, and Washington has it, is pushed out of bounds, has the first down for USC at the 44-yard line. Calvin Nicholson makes the stop. Marlon Washington, a six-foot, 195-pound junior, a player who's really developing. He sees action in every game, but they don't throw in his direction very much. They have not, but the Trojans, even though they picked up the first down passing, they should come right back with running and just kind of wear the defense down. They have to do that to win this ball game. So Marlon Washington now takes the spot of Gary Wellman as the rotating third receiver. Pitch back, Lockwood reading his blocks very well, and Lockwood down to the 45-yard line of Oregon State. Nothing fancy, we're just coming at you with our horses, and if you can stop, it's fine. If you can't, we're just gonna beat you right down the ground on that SC football, and there's, that's the power back right there, Scott Lockwood. Lockwood, who had only 233 yards rushing last year, well over 300 already this season, and 27 yards today in the first half, but has come out running strong in this second half. Mike Maggiore made the tackle in Lockwood on the play. 44-yard line, first and 10. Back right side to Scott Galbraith. Went out in for the first half, but is back in action again here in the second half. Andre Harris making the stop. SC's offense is not very fancy. As you can see, they just run crazy. Power stuff, undercover, um, undercover patterns to the tight end, to half holder to John, John, John Jackson. And their game is just to run a very much control offense. And if they do that, they can beat anyone. Craig Thorpe, he knows Second and one as the sky clouding up a little bit, getting a little bit darker now. Sun no longer out. Leroy Holt rambles down to the 30-yard line. It took three tacklers to bring Holt down. Bruce Sanders along with Tom Petrus there combining on that tackle. At halftime, Rich, Craig Thorpe told his team that we could control them offensively we can move the ball defensively. We must control the SC offense. And let's have a first good drive when they kick it off to them. Let's control their offense. And so far, they haven't done it. Another first down for USC. Trojans really have a nice drive going here as Lockwood carries the ball once again. He gets it down to the 27-yard line. Larry Valenic made the tackle. Valenic is a guy who has a lot of natural athletic ability. He skipped spring football drills this year while playing baseball, and he's a good baseball player. He hit over 360 for the Oregon State baseball team. Doesn't always go over too big with the football coaches when they skip out on the practice comes around. <laughs> Quick drop by Pete. Marlon Washington. Inside the 20 to the 18, slipped out of the grass for Calvin and Nicholson. He's also a two-sport guy. He's been a sprinter on the track team here at Oregon State. Yes, he has just uh, versatility now. The defense is rotating to Appholter's side, so Washington has one-on-one coverage, and there he's coming off the field. One-on-one coverage with the corner on his side, and you just pick at him, and it's very tough to cover one-on-one, -on -one, and Pete has just been moving the ball right down the field. Half Holter and Jackson, wide right, back split. From the 18, Rodney Pete in trouble. 
avoids a tackler. Here comes Pelham McDaniels. He throws. It is complete to Leroy Holton. Holton is down to the 14-yard line. Good job by Rodney Pete. That athletic ability again. Holt tackled by Mike Sanders. Pete is very effective here where he just runs and, and it's very tough to get him because he has 4-5 speed. He finds Leroy Holt here who makes the reception, picks up a couple of yards, but there's some question, why don't you run the ball at him and just run it right down their throats because they haven't stopped you in the run so far. Rodney Pete leads the Trojans up to the line of scrimmage, 12 out of 17 with two touchdowns today. His pass is tipped to the line of scrimmage and knocked down. Giacomelli, I think, got it. Ray Giacomelli, 6'5", 216-pound senior. And he has been a force today. He's a good football player. One of the things they want to do is put pressure. You can see they brought everybody but their uh, kin folks and they knocked the ball down, and Pete almost has a chance to catch it again. Drive started on the USC 20. It has reached the Oregon State 14. It is third down and six. Straight drop for Pete. Loops it for John Jackson. Incomplete. Closing ground quickly to make the stop and break up the play was David Brennan. Jackson had him beat quickly. The ball was thrown where Brennan had a chance to react to it, and that is what he did. Great play. Pete's reading that right now. You see his eyes looking to the right side. Now he sees Jackson open. He lost it. Maybe it should have been a little quicker pass, but Brennan reacts to it. John Jackson just can't hold on to it. Incomplete pass in the end zone. Nice play by Brennan, the senior cornerback. Quinn Rodriguez will try a 31-yard field goal, and it is good. So Rodriguez, who hit from 42 yards earlier today, converts on a 31-yarder, and now it is SC 20, Oregon State 7. College Football 88 is brought to you by Volkswagen. We invite you to see the Volkswagen Fox today at your local Volkswagen dealer, and by Labatt's Blue, Canada's number one selling beer. It's blue heaven. And by Michelin, because so much is riding on your tires. Here at Parker Stadium, homecoming day. It is USC 20 and Oregon State 7. So now the Beavers are going to get their hands on the football for the first time in this half after the Trojans drove and scored. They nearly got the touchdown on the pass to John Jackson, but it was broken up by a nice play by David Brannon. So SC had to settle for the three points. Quinn Rodriguez, second field goal of the game. There's probably the, that's the offensive team sitting down. They're talking about what they could do next in the next series. But the last time Oregon State had the ball, they scored right before the halftime. And they didn't throw a ball more than 10 yards down the field. You can look for Wilhelm to play ball control, pass offense, and move the ball right down the field on the Trojans. Here's the kickoff, and it comes to Rob Thomas, 20, running laterally to the 25. It's knocked down just across the 25. It's a Trojan kick coverage, quick to get down, but they really didn't have to get down too far, Mike. That was a short kick. Yes, and Brian Tulio came in and made the tackle, and good pursuit. And Oregon State has good field position. Can you believe that Eric Wilhelm threw 30 passes in the first half? Completed 17 of them. So you can see, with 192 yards passing, the way that the Oregon State Beavers are going today. The short passing game has been very effective. There it is again. A little dink over the middle to Chafee. And they're just nickel and diamond the Trojans to death with that little stuff over the middle. And what happens is when you start uh, asking the linebackers not to drop off so far so they can't throw underneath patterns, and they'll run a throw bomb to you. With, and Rob Thomas is very good at that. So uh, the Trojans are in a bind, and, and at this point, all you can do is run deals and try and get more pressure on Wilhelm before he can read the defense. It may be that Oregon State really feels that it can't run in the Trojans, so it's going back to its old bread and butter. That's the reason they feel they can't run in the Trojans. 
Because they can't. They sure can't throw that short game at you. Well, Wilhelm is already over the 200-yard mark passing. They're close to getting the first down. They needed two yards. I think they got perhaps uh, about a yard and a half. Maybe, well, let's see. Have they taken time out for a measure? But maybe he struggled a little closer to that first down than I thought, Mike. One of the fears of the Trojans, the defensive scheme, was that Measurement shows that it's a little bit short of the first down. A little bit short, so it's going to be third and inches coming up here. It's very close. Don't forget, fans, coming up next, right here on the Prime Ticket Network, we're going to have the Pac-10 Game of the Week, the Cal Golden Bears against the Arizona Wildcats. Coming to your way from Arizona Stadium in Tucson, Arizona, and that will be a lot. Here we go in third and inches. Trojans jam the center of the line. Wilhelm gives to Chafee. Chafee runs over a minute. Oh, if he could have broken out of there cleanly, he would have had a lot of green territory to run. Mark Carrier is the guy that brought him down and had the tackle, but the Trojans were so jammed up in the middle, they didn't have much behind Carrier if he That's got right. away. They just run a power off tackle play with the fullback, and Carrier's job is to come up and make the uh, force, and Chafee just ran over him. First down for Oregon State. Wilhelm, a little bit more adventurous on that pass. He was trying to hit Chafee on a quick up down the right sideline, but Chafee was covered. Sometimes I'm not exactly sure if Wilhelm's unloading it purposely. They're really, the Trojan coverage was very tight on all the receivers. He didn't have anything to go, anywhere to go. Well, that time, um, oh. Owens had to put a big rush on him. He couldn't make the read, and so he just threw the ball cleverly, very quickly away. Lloyd Bailey, backup wide receiver, brings the play in. Second and 10 now for Oregon State from the 45. Good protection now for Wilhelm. He passes to Bailey. And Bailey is brought down by Spears. He's got about eight yards on the play. And we got flags flying all over the place. Rob Jack, the center for the Oregon State Beavers, made a late hit after Bailey made the uh, catch and was down. It's a key play for Oregon, Oregon State because it takes them right out of their drive if they get a 15-yard march off against, against where the position they are now. Rob Jack coming in this year at a difficult job and trying to replace Dave Orndorff, a talented center. This, this conference has a lot of talented centers, has had in the last couple of years. There's the personal foul. Rob Jack, the center, who's a very emotional and a kind of a wild man kind of guy. You see Rob Thomas there in Bailey, number five, is going to go underneath the pattern. Now he's going to catch the ball and he's going to make a good gainer here. And there's Spears making the tackle. Now you'll see 52. There, see his body flying through. He makes a hit on the heart psyker. It's a, a late hit. That was really a well-designed play. You could see from our camera angle, too, the, the different patterns and routes that were being run by the receivers for Oregon State. A penalty like that is just like a turnover. It takes you right out of your continuity of your offense. Third and 18. Big rush from Seau. He steps up into the pocket. He's going to fire deep. He's got Rob Thomas out there. The pass is to Rob Thomas reaching up over Chris Hale. The first time today that the Oregon State Beavers go deep, they get Rob Thomas on a 53-yarder over Hale. Wilhelm knows that they're getting linebacker of blitz support, so that's one-on-one -on -one coverage. That's Rob Thomas against Chris Hale. Chris comes over, but he comes there late. Rob Thomas makes the reception. Great play. Rob Thomas has now caught six passes today for 116 yards. They're just inside the 10. They can't get a first down. Pass right side to check. Incomplete. Pass did not lead Chafee well, was throwing a bit behind him. There's a penalty on the play. It's on the line of scrimmage. Tex Williams, 54, Michael Williams is clapping his hand, so it must be against Oregon State, is holding.
that play, that 53-yarder, came on a third and 18 for Oregon State. That's confidence. Well, they have tried to lull the Trojans to sleep with all those little short passes, all those little dinks over the middle. And finally, they went deep on them. And it paid off. Now Dwayne Garner checks into the ball game for the Trojans. This is Junior Seau. It's first and goal now, but it's from the 20. Just inside the 20. They run a nickel defense where Tracy Blackson places the linebacker, Tex Williams, giving more people in the backfield. Trojans have a blitz on, pass over the middle. Complete to Rob Thomas. Beautiful read by Wilhelm. He felt the pressure. He saw the Trojans really had the blitz on. He unloaded it in time to Thomas, who was brought down by Cleveland Colder, but not before he had 16 yards on the play. And what makes that play so so good is that Wilhelm gets the ball from center, and he has a fumble, but he gets the ball under control. One-on-one -on -one coverage, Rob Thomas. There's Cleveland Colter on it, but he's there too late. excitement here at Parker Stadium today as this homecoming day crowd has watched its Oregon State Beavers perform very well against USC. The Beavers are now within six points at 20 to 14 as Troy Businich gets ready to kick it off. The scoring drive for Oregon State covered 73 yards and eight plays. Wilhelm to Bailey, a three-yard touchdown pass, but the key play was, of course, that third and 18 play for 53 yards, Wilhelm to Rob Thomas. The Trojans back deep to receive. Again, you're seeing two of the three deep that the Trojans have. Here comes Businich, and he's gonna try to line drive and squib bomb. It goes over the up end into the end zone. Somebody's gotta grab it and down it, they do. Rogers downs it in the end zone for the Trojans, and you can really feel the Oregon State momentum here. The momentum has shifted. The Beavers are hot, and they're playing very good football. Defensively, they're going to come at and just do a lot, make a lot of deals, make it very complicated for the Trojans to block. Hopefully, the Trojans get confused, make an error, and they get the ball back, and they'll come right back into the same offensive game plan. The Trojans must control the line of scrimmage. Oregon State once trailed in this game 17 to nothing. To Lockwood. Up to the 25 and to the 27 yard line. There's Larry Smith. He's got to be concerned. He's been disappointed in recent the last couple of weeks. We mentioned earlier today he's called for his Trojans have been playing very average football the last couple of weeks despite their high ranking nationally, third in the nation. Second and three for SC. Lockwood again, steamrollers for a first down. It's close to a late hit by Mike Matthews after Lockwood was down. Larry Vladek was the principal tackler. Trojans must continue to run the ball that way and make their, give a little deception where they run outside, inside, so they don't know exactly where the Trojans are going to go. 
and just wear down the defense and give their offense or their own defense a chance to rest. Lockwood now has 66 yards today. He had over 130 against Washington in his last outing. Here comes Leroy Holt. Mike Matthews brings Holt down at the 38 yard line. Holt smashes the ball to the ground. And he's getting emotional out there. He's getting a little emotional. He says, hey, look, someone missed a block. It's not tough to run against these people. Let's dig in. Let's play football. to the left side. It's been a very physical game here today. The Trojans have had some injuries. You're looking at one of them. Well, actually standing right behind there, you see Gary Wellman, who you normally see wearing number 83, but he suffered a sprained ankle today. And it is uh, certainly no great sight to see him on crutches right now. And now we have an injured Oregon State player. Holt now has 55 yards rushing. Lockwood 66, Holt 55. The Trojan rushing game beginning to take hold. But we have an Oregon State player down. What's interesting so far is whenever the offensive line starts blocking the balls based on who's on the ground, and see will uh, get one, one of the running plays not successful, and they'll go to the passing play, and it takes them right out of their continuity. So they must uh, uh, keep their heads up and not change their plan that much to control the line of scrimmage. 20 to 14 in favor of USC. Third quarter, we'll be right back. Tom Vetris was the injured player, but he walked off the field under his own pressure. We'll get some attention right now. USC has the football first and 10 at the 45 yard line. Leading Oregon State 20 to 14 in a surprisingly tough battle. Scott Lockwood spinning at the line, is wrapped up at the line. Essera Tua Olo. Came on strong last year, started the last three games, and has been the chief in the Oregon State's recovery this year to a respectability in college football. And one of the ways to stop the running game is get penetration, and that's just what happened. Dewey Tucker, a defensive lineman, got inside, made the running back change his course. At this time, Oregon State has more total yards than USC. Rodney Pete passes the ball to Scott Galbraith. Galbraith with a lot of power. See, you really can see the emotions really beginning to take over in this game now. A lot of uh, fists being thrown up. You just saw a high five with Galbraith and Leroy Holt. Players playing hurt. The Trojans have had a lot of injuries, and Galbraith has shown his and said, hey, we're deep. We can come back. We have enough talent to beat anybody in the country. This is a big play, third and one. Crowd trying to urge the Oregon State defense onto a stop here. Dewey Tucker, the Dewey guy who Tucker. took Tom Petrus' place in the middle of that line after they brought Petrus out injured. There's only Spurl's second punt coming up. His earlier one today, not even 33 yards. Hubbard is back on his own 10-yard line. Fields the ball at the 11 and is swarmed under. That's where Oregon State is going to take over the football at the 11-yard line. And there's Eric Wilhelm getting ready to lead his Oregon State offense, and the fans are going wild here for two reasons. One, their defense has stopped the Trojans, and second, their offense now has a chance to put Oregon State in front. It is something to be excited about because the Trojans haven't been able to stop Goldhelm in his last two drives. 36-yard punt by Spurl. It's the kind of punt the Trojans needed. They back Oregon State up. 
Ball at the 12. And a dump pass over the middle. Right through Brian Tuliao and picks up big yardage out to the 23-yard line. And Tuliao is hurt. Quite a head-on collision between Phil Ross and Brian Tuliao. Tulio, Tulio had right, uh, Ross dead to rights on this play. And you see where the tight end will just drop off again once uh, uh, Wilhelm fouls and there's Tulio hits him straight on. The reason Tulio got hurt is Ross got underneath his power and gave him the hit. And that's what you do when you're the ball carrier. You deliver the blow. That was head to head. And what you worry about in that situation, of course, is the possibility of an injury to the neck. I think it's a, he has a pinched nerve in his neck, and it's only because Ross got underneath him and delivered it, and he had to be the, rece the recipient of, uh, of the blow. Here we get a look now. Watch Ross, well, 81 will get lower than Tulio's head, and that determines who's gonna get hit and accept the blow. 56 accepts the blow, and he cannot get up. He must get lower than be the lowest guy on a play on a collision like that. Brian Tulio, sophomore inside linebacker for USC, took that hit head on from Phil Ross. And he's moving around down there, although they're trying to keep him motionless. Wilhelm, with that completion, has now completed 23 of 37 passes for 292 yards. But our concern at this time is for Brian Tulio. And additional attention as Tulio continues to be administered to here at Parker State. 349 to go in the third quarter. It's SC 20, Oregon State 14. It is a concern, Larry Smith and all of the members of the USC staff and everyone here, of course, for Brian Tulio, the inside linebacker for USC who was injured on a play. And uh, Brian Tulio, who was involved in basically was a head-to-head -head collision with Phil Ross, the tight end of Oregon State. They both had big momentum up. They were running directly at each other. And Brian Tulio, the sophomore out of Long Beach, a skilled, smart, real leader. Starter this year being helped off, and now his teammates go off to encourage him as he is wheeled off on the gurney and will be taken immediately by ambulance and sure to the hospital. Brian Tuliao of USC. So Larry Smith now will, and the Trojans will have to turn their attention to trying to stop the Oregon State Beavers, who in this game trail USC by a score of 20 to 14 with three minutes and 49 seconds remaining to be played in the third quarter. SC once led in this football game 17 to nothing. But even then, Mike, I felt that Oregon State was playing pretty good football. That's right. You remember they had two turnovers, and a couple of times they just had mishaps where they just actually stopped the drive, and they came in the last three drives that the Oregon State uh, uh, offense has had, the Trojans have not stopped them. Elsewhere around the nation today, second-ranked Notre Dame has defeated Navy 22 to 7. And fourth-ranked Miami beat East Carolina 31 to 7. Here comes Oregon State, first and 10 from its own 22. Pass over the middle, it's complete. They've got Ross across midfield and down to the 43-yard line. It's a very simple play. They get Phil Ross. It's like the old kind of look-in play where he's at tied in. Wilhelm reads that the linebackers are probably put, uh, putting pressure on him. So there's Ross right over the middle. 35-yard completion to Phil Ross. They've made some big plays today. They had a 53-yard pass completion earlier to Rob Thomas. Ross and Thomas having tremendous days. Ross has now caught six for 104. Both those players over 100 yards receiving today. Hand off to Chapin. They try to turn the corner on the left side across the 40 and down to the 38. If 
you think the uh, Trojans are really right afraid of the running game? They're not, but Wilhelm is just going to give them a different look and come right back with the pass. Very clear, clever play calling. Eric Wilhelm, 328 yards passing today. His 11th time over 300 yards. Earlier this season, he threw for 353 yards against Colorado. Short of a first down. When you get a ball, a ball receiver, or a potential receiver in that position, you're supposed to let him have it. Trojans are grabbing. In 1967, USC was ranked number one in the nation. Came up here to Oregon State and was defeated by Oregon State by a score of three to nothing. Oregon State has never beaten SC since. Will today be the day that they take on a highly ranked Trojan team and come off again? Movement on the line. Penalty flags everywhere. Boy, all week long I've been hearing of people drawing comparisons to the situation that the two teams were in back in 1967 as compared to this one. An SC Dreaming National Championship this year, as it was in 1967. It is an illegal procedure call against Oregon State to send them back five yards. That makes it hard on the Beavers now, as they had a third and two. SC's coming right back with a nickel defense of one additional uh, corner to cover. Wilhelm so far has not had any trouble. It's correct of arguing that, hey, my team wasn't off, off that offside. There was no illegal motion. Of course, to no avail. The Trojans actually have gone to a dime package here, Mike. They've got six defensive backs in the game. Well, dime back, nickel back, but essentially they give you another uh, more coverage. And, and so far, Ross and Rob Thomas and uh, company have been very effective getting down the secondary and, and be wide open so Wilhelm can throw it to them. They've been throwing the passes in this situation right over the middle. This is showing blitz. Wilhelm looking over the middle, he fires, it is incomplete, intercepted, picked off by Cleveland Colder, who was out of bounds at the 23-yard line to end this drive by Oregon State. Could be the biggest play of the game so far. Wilhelm is going to drop back. He's going downfield a little further than he normally does. He has a little rush on him. There's a tip, and they had this tip drill every day in workout. There's Cleveland Colder comes by, picks it up. There's Bill Ross, who's been playing so well, interferes, and there goes Colter out of bounds. No matter how many great statistics and numbers Oregon State rolls up today, there is one glaring number they're not going to like. Three turnovers, none for USC. And this is a team that was way on the plus side of the ledger coming into today. Bradley Peak to John Jackson at the 40. 47-yard line. Coming up from behind was Vladek to make the tackle. Big play there by the Trojan that gets him out of the hole and perhaps get a little bit of offensive momentum going. Yes, this is no touch. This is John Jackson getting his seam on the outside, and Pete just rifles his ball out there. Hey, no, there's no chance for interception here. And there you see John Jackson a little nippy that picks up a few more yards. And the Beavers are not ready for it, and they have two, their two best receivers have two receptions in a row. 34 now. Comes to Laddick on a blitz, but he gets the pass off to Apple. Diving try. He can't quite get there. And they had a safety blitz on, bringing Larry Vladek from the left side. So Appholter was lined up against Teddy Johnson. Appholter's upset on this because he's going one-on-one -on -one with Teddy Johnson. He's been beating Teddy Johnson all day. The ball's laid out perfectly. Appholter will make this catch nine times out of ten. It just kind of trickles off his fingers. Play was going to pitch it 
shot to Lockwood. Illegal motion, I would say, against USC. Rodney Pete today has completed 15 of 23 passes for 187 yards. There's the motion penalty signaled against the Trojans. Uh, Pete's 15 completions, five have gone to Eric Affolter, and he did have the two Trojan touchdowns in the first half. The Trojans have not scored a touchdown since the first quarter. You could say the Trojans have some kind of self-destructed themselves because they have moved the ball well. They get inside the uh, Beavers' 30-yard uh, line, and they have not been able to punch it in. So it's second and 15 for SC. Rodney P. Diving John Jackson, coming back to the ball. Jackson brought down by Andre Harris from behind. Trojans are playing kind of field position, getting in, in, in a placement where they can either go for a touchdown, and if they don't do that, they can kick a field goal. A field goal would give USC some breathing room, not a lot. But it would put them at least two scores out in front of Oregon State. Pete walks up to the line of scrimmage, does not like what he sees. No, that's the end of the third quarter. I thought he was about to signal timeout, but instead the third quarter has come to an end. 20 to 14, USC. Say, Trojan fans, you can relive the great teams, players, and games by ordering your own three-volume set of Trojan Video Gold. Volume 1 is the history of USC football from 1988 to 59. Volume 2 covers 1960 through 86, and the new Volume 3 takes an exciting look at the history of the SC-UCLA rivalry. Each volume costs $39.95. All three are available for the special price of $100. To order in the 213 area code, call SC Video. Or write Trojan Video Gold, USC Athletic Department, Heritage Hall, 203A, Los Angeles, California, 90089. Now here comes Rodney Pete, bringing the Trojans out now to start the fourth quarter. USC leading Oregon State by a score of 20 to 14. I'm Rich Morata along with Mike Garrett. We are in Corvallis. And we are ready to go. Third down play for SC. Pete under pressure. He is blindsided. The ball comes free and is recovered by Oregon State. Giacomelli, who has played a huge game today, hit Rodney Pete. The ball came forward and was intercepted by Mike Matthews. On this play, the Beavers are bringing everyone but about three defenders. Pete never has a chance. He gets hit from the blind side. This is like kind of what happened last week, two weeks ago in Washington. Ball's in the air. You watch him take this hit. It should be criminal. Oh, what a hit. Balls in the air, your interception, and that's the, inter the interception by Mike Matthews, the middle linebacker. Ray Giacomelli has got to be playing the game of his life today. What a hit, full speed on Rodney Keith. Ball popped free, Matthews was there. And finally, Oregon State affects a turnover from USC. 20 to 14. The Trojans have faced disaster twice this year against Stanford, in which they were able to prevail in the late going 24 to 20, and of course against Washington two weeks ago. The Trojans, look at the total yards, 369 to 368. Time of possession just about even. Now Oregon State wants to get in front. Pass is intercepted, third straight turnover, Delmar Chesley. The man who intercepts the pass of Eric Wilhelm. They went to the well once too often with that little big pass over the middle. Lucky Chesley is looking for that play this time, and they're like a double coverage to the man short. Now we get a shot. There's Wilhelm, and there's Chesley being very aggressive, comes right in front of the receiver. He picks the ball off, and the Trojans first down, and luckily for the Trojans, uh, Wilhelm made a bad selection. Threw right into the heart of the zone, there's Dermar Chesley, 6'2", 235, junior, and he's from Washington, D.C. Big play by Chesley, and now SC has it back, first down at the 39. Leroy Holt. 
We'll try the middle of the line, struggles forward for three yards. On that play, the Beavers lined up just like they did before when they hit Pete from behind, but this time they call an audible on the line of scrimmage, run a pullback to the left to the left guard spot. They pick up three yards. Andre Harris, 26, who you're looking at right now, a senior free safety, a real good one. Probably the best defensive player making the tackle. 20 to 14, SC leading, trying to add to that lead, but it's a struggle here today against the Beavers. Pete with a quick drop and a pass to Al Holder, who was aiming strictly to get to that first down marker. Trying to keep those chains moving. You know, it doesn't matter how tough things get. It's just a beauty to watch Affolder and Pete operate. And it's, they're just like uh, machines here. Affolder goes right to the point where he needs a first down. He makes the reception. Well, Eric Affolder, fifth in the USC list with 96 receptions. Heading for the century mark and pass receptions now. Eric's had a great career. Had a chance to play last year when Ken Henry got hurt. Boy, did he ever seize that opportunity. Showed everyone his acrobatic ability in catching that football. Continued with a fine season this year. He did not quite make the first down. Third down this time. Rodney Pete right, takes it straight ahead. And USC has the first down this time. There's Al Holter. Why don't we take a look here? Mike, there's some pretty good names that... Uh, Eric Affolter has he probably passed probably the best receiver as he's had in the history of the school, Lynn Swan. Ed Norman, who's played 82 85 with 113, but uh, soon Affolter will be reaching his uh, numbers. He splits out wide to the right side now. pretty fired up this whole second half. He wanted some way to do make up or show him that, hey, guys, do not die on me. Offensive line blows out. And watch Leroy. This is the Holt rumble. He refuses to go down. If you don't wrap me, I'm going. No one wraps him here. Watch, he's going to hit by maybe two more guys. And he just said, no way. I'm going in the end zone. And that's Trojan running. That's Holt, Holt rumble. I like that. The Trojans now will go point. for a two-point conversion. He rolls right, looking, waiting for something to open. Now he throws back the other way to John Jackson. So the Trojans settle for the six points on a 28-yard run by Leroy Holt. And they now lead Oregon State with 13.41 to go in the ball game, 26-14. Trojan Football 88 is brought to you by Great Western's family of companies with over $30 billion in assets. 100 years strong will always be there. And by your Southern California Chevy dealer. See them now and enter the Beach Boys sweepstakes. You can win a new Cavalier or an S10 pickup. And don't miss the Beach Boys concert at the Coliseum after the November 5th USC California game. Getting ready for the kickoff now, and Quinn Rodriguez is back doing the kickoffs for USC. Trojans lead 26 to 14. They got perhaps the momentum stopper on that last drive in which they were able to cover 39 yards in just four plays. The big play, the 28-yard touchdown run by Leroy Holt. Here's Brian Taylor and Rob Thomas back deep to receive the kick from Quinn Rodriguez, and as you can see, they don't expect him to kick it very far. They're standing on the 10-yard line. Rodriguez's approach, and he kicks it even shorter than that. Taylor takes it on the 15 on the right side, cuts back across to the other side of the field, takes a hard hit at the back, and is brought down. Oh, that's Lamar Hollenquist. Right. Which I can guarantee you one thing, that the Beavers will not die. They'll be coming right back, same offense, nothing complicated. That's his defense, but they're going to be up for the pass. 12-yard return of the kick, giving Oregon State a first down at the 27-yard line. 
last time Oregon State had the ball, this place was in an uproar. They trailed by only six at that point, and it stopped USC. But Wilhelm threw the interception on the very first pass. But Wilhelm rolls, he throws to the left side, he's got a man out in front of him, and hooks forward to the 37 yard to the 38 yard line. You run that kind of screen play against a defense that's very aggressive because they won't get the penetration that you need to run that play. And, and Eric Wilhelm cleverly gets back there and throws it to uh, his running back there, Nicholson, and they go right up the field. Wilhelm, quick two step drop. <laughs> just smashed down to the turf and he gets up I don't know how but Cleveland Coulter really leveled him that's what you have to do to stop that play this is what one reason people hate to catch the ball over the middle because you're susceptible to these kind of things and this is one of them oh Cleveland Coulter he's a hitter here's another shot of it Cleveland Coulter Given a colder hit there, Rob Thomas felt every inch of that. There's pressure from Hartzeiger on the back side, but he's still got the pass off to Chafee. He is really knocked out of bounds by about four Trojan tackers. Randy Horde joining the Hordes there to finish him off. That's the only way the Trojans can stop this type of offense is this gang tackle. Don't give him any option to run and keep him to as short a gang as possible. Don't forget, ladies and gentlemen, we have the Pac-10 game of the week coming up live from Tucson, the Cal Bears and the Arizona Wildcats. Now third and eight. It's the play fake. Jordan should be holding the net right about now. The throw over the middle and it is incomplete. Nice defense by Ernest Spears on the play. Breaks up the pass intended for Reggie Hubbard. Reggie Hubbard is a speedster, and you haven't heard the name Ernest Spears for a while because they have not been running his side, and they brought Hubbard in to uh, possibly get a big game play here, but Ernest Spears is right on there, and he comes and reacts to the ball and knocks Hubbard away from the reception. He was getting safety help from Mark Carrier behind, but Spears really didn't need it. Here's the punt. Cleveland Colder lets bounce out of bounds at the 23-yard line. So 12 minutes and 11 seconds remain in this football game. It's USC 26, Oregon State 14. Following the 37-yard punt, the Trojans have the ball first and 10 from the 22. The give is to Ricky Irvins, and he bowls over a man and pile drives his way out to the 30-yard line. Ricky Irvins took on Andre Harris and knocked him back, and that's not easy to do against the safety the likes of Andre Harris. Andre Harris who comes in, and he knocks heads every time. He got caught in a bad position. The rule is you better get lowered into the uh, ball carrier, and he didn't. Now there's another injury on for the Beavers. It is Jim Curitan, the injured player, number 87, outside linebacker, who started the day today replacing Scott Sanders, who was out injured. And now Curitan is up. He'll walk off under his own power. It's imperative that the Chokers keep those momentum going and kind of take the momentum and control the uh, ball, get their defense rest. Now they bring in Joe Palamalu to take the place of Curitan. They're down to their third weak side linebacker. Second and two for SC after that eight yard pickup. They give us to Leroy Holt. He's got the first down. He's got a lot more than that. Leroy Holt out to the 45 yard line. Larry Vladek and Pelham McDaniels bring him down. This will go unnoticed by most people. There's uh, Leroy Holt getting up after a good game, but the reason this is working is that they're afraid of Rodney Peach. You remember the last drive, he threw two completions right away. They had to open up, and they've been running the fullback ever since and just picking up yards as they go. The Trojans bring Mark Sager out now on that offensive line. Holt has gone over the 100-yard mark. First down 10. 
Green in trouble, stops, plants his feet, throws to Appholter. It is caught by Appholter off the tip. Touchdown, USA! The bad. Eric Appholter went up for the football, but David Brennan, the ball was tipped into the air, Appholter with great concentration caught it and went the rest of the distance on the 55 yards for the touchdown. And Peter said this time and time again, if my man's one-on-one, -on -one, that's Appholter, and he has to go against the defender, I will throw the ball, I will let him be a better athlete than the defender, and I promise you he will score, he will catch the ball, and that's exactly what Appholter did on that play. Eric Appholter has now caught seven passes today for 137 yards and three touchdowns. And SC asserts control of this football game again, just when it looked as though they might be headed for disaster. The Trojans going for two points. Now the Trojans will attempt a two-point conversion. Their last try down here came up short. He's rolling right, but he wants to throw back the other way, and this time he's got it. A two-point conversion for the Trojans on a pass completion. That's Mark Martin. That's Chesley, a tight end for USC. The pass complete to number 84. There's Eric Appholder. What a day he has had. Three touchdowns. He has scored on passes of 21, 11, and 55 yards. SC leads it 34 to 14. Back once again at Parker Stadium, the USC Trojans now have blown out to a 34 to 14 lead with two touchdowns in this fourth quarter. We have an update now on the condition of Brian Tuliao, the Trojans inside linebacker who was hurt earlier in that collision with Phil Ross, a head on. Tuliao had suffered a possible cervical sprain. He has been taken to the hospital for precautionary x-rays, and we do want to point out that he is moving his arms and his legs, which is something, of course, that you always worry about in that situation when you suffer perhaps some type of neck or back injury. And so we wish the best uh, for Brian Tuliao. Quinn Rodriguez now will kick off for USC. Kicks it cross field to Taylor. Taylor looking for something to open up. And he is brought down at the 25 yard line. Well, Mike, the Trojans were looking right into the cannon today and they have faced disaster square in the face and I think perhaps they have uh, managed once again to not blink. And I think the key to it was Rodney Pete coming right out two drives ago and throwing two straight pass completions, one to Appholder, one to John Jackson and opened up the defense of the Beavers and they've been going uh, pretty strong thereafter. On first down, Wilhelm gets a rush from Hartsiker. His pass over the middle is complete to Chafee. Chafee up to the 35 yard line. Close to a first down. The Beavers are not gonna die. If you expect them to do that, they won't. They ball control offense they're all with their passing game and they can always come back this is not going to go down as one of the great defensive struggles in history so far oregon state has 390 yards in offense sc 484 so that's already about 870 yards of offense in this football game with 10 minutes to go yet in the trade that's called a track meet straight up the middle to give to brian taylor brian taylor Got that first down is also the son of a former National Football That's League right. player. No, I was going to tell you this. Uh, Brian Taylor is the son of Roosevelt Taylor. For many of you out there who watched the Chicago Bears in the uh, middle, early 60s and the late se in the early 70s, Brian Taylor played. Uh, Roosevelt Taylor played for the Chicago Bears, and I had a chance to play against him. He's a very tough football player. First down for Oregon State. Wilhelm pressure all over the face mask penalty. Tim Ryan was looking for a sack, and he reached out with his arm, grabbed right hold of uh, Wilhelm's face mask, pulled him down with that. That's not the way to get a uh, quarterback sack. No, it isn't, but Tim Ryan has just been pretty uh, uh, frustrated all day, and there he grabs a face mask, but he'll tell you that's inadvertent in 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 because he's been just trying to reach his quarterback, and. When he had a chance, he would take anything he can, but that's illegal. Now, let's get another shot of it. 
And that's the most dangerous thing you can do in, in, in football generally is grab someone's face mask because you can pop their neck so easily. And now they're going to mark it off, and the officials don't think it was too inadvertent. They mark off a 15-yarder. Inadvertent meaning that he just instinct just trying to get to the quarterback. So that sets up Oregon State with a first down right at midfield, Mike. You're right, they're not going to die. They're not going to die. Remember, they trailed 17 to nothing, fought back to where they trailed USC by only six at 20 to 14. Just inside the 50. Hartsiker's got him, fumble. Trojan's got him. Craig Hartsiker, who has been close on several occasions to getting to Wilhelm, finally came up from behind that time and stripped him of the ball to force the fumble, and the Trojans get it back. I believe Don Gibson made the fumble recovery. Ironically, Ryan comes in, gets penalized, but then they get penetration back to back, and this time it's 40. Remember, uh, this Craig Hartsiker comes inside, but cleverly, see, he knocks the ball out of the quarterback's hand. Don Gibson's there, right to fall on it, Trojans ball. Look at Larry Smith. <laughs> That's a way to show a little emotion, Larry, on that sidelines. There's a pass overthrown intended for John Jackson. Rodney's a little off there, but that's the pass that set up the drive two, two drives ago, and he went right back to the 25 yard line. And Rodney Pete with an impressive showing here today 18 of 30, 256 yards, and three touchdowns. Wilhelm will have more total yards, but again, he was throwing those interceptions, and that hurt. Pete deciding whether to pitch or not, now reverses his field. He's run all the way back by Pelham McDaniels to the 35. He's being chased now. He's still pumping that arm, and he dives forward down to the 16-yard line. That was the longest trip <laughs> I think Rodney Pete has had all year. That's a big play because as the game has been going kind of slow for the Trojans, you try to lose momentum. Rodney Pete says, I'm going to take this game in my hands, and I'm going to try and pick up this first down. And if you, even if I have to run across field and run myself right out of gas, I will, let me tell you, those legs are getting pretty heavy at this point. He's faking a, a pass, and he just wants to get out of bounds. Well, Rodney Pete, now sixth in uh, Pac-10 career total offense. And today in total offense, Rodney has 301 yards. 45 yards rushing, another 256 passing. So he continues to move up the ladder in just about every career category imaginable. But he was a little bit short of the first down on that play, so it's fourth and one. And now the Trojans, as they come up to the line of scrimmage, decide to all timeout. So we have nine minutes and five seconds remaining to be played here at Parker Stadium. It's SC 34, Oregon State 14. Fourth and one for USC. The Trojans on top by 20. We're in the fourth quarter of play. Rodney Pete looking things over for SC. He needs a yard to keep this drive going. Gives it to Ricky Irvins, and Irvins has the first down for USC. Big hole off the right side. Great blocking by the Trojans. Brent Parkinson and Turk Marshall. That's his fine up front blocking. And uh, Ricky Irvins keeping his head up. And one thing they did on this one is they didn't run directly in the, in, in the, in the center line. They gave an outside motion and gave Ricky Irvins an option, and he picked it up for the first down. Mark Sager is also in there at right guard, has not played much this year. Pete with hold in front of him, throws it over the middle. He's trying to get the ball to Ricky Irvins, but the, the pass came up short. That's Mike Matthews, 58, who put pressure on Pete. Made Pete throw it in the ground. Good pressure. 8.41 to go. The Trojans trying to get the real clincher here. They'd like to put this Oregon State team away. UCLA thought they had to put away earlier this year, and they came back, made a real game of it. SC thought they had to put away perhaps earlier today when they led 17 to nothing. Irvins reading his blocking. Down to the three-yard line. Andre Harris brings 
him down. The only way you beat the Beavers is you have to outscore them. And you just and at eight minutes to play, you just better put all the points up because they can come right back. And that's just what the Trojans are trying to do. Oregon State is clearly a much improved football team. You know, you see them out here, you can tell, Mike, and you know. The sad part of it is, from an Oregon State uh, standpoint, is that this is going to really look like, if the final score should SC get in, for example, here, it'd be 41 to 14, would just look like a tremendously one-sided route. But that's not, you've got to remember that in the fourth quarter, this game at one point was 20 to 14. And now the Trojans have uh, taken control, as they often do in the fourth quarter. Rodney Pete coming off the field now for USC, with the ball on the two-yard line, with Third down, two to go, of course, for the touchdown in 7.54. Rodney Pete, of course, has had such a tremendous season, a Heisman Trophy candidate, having another great day today. He's impressed everyone. There's no question about it. He certainly impressed the coach of the Washington Huskies, Don James, two weeks ago. Here's what James had to say about Rodney. He said, Pete made the plays that he had to make to get the win. His play was critical. He could beat you with the run and the pass. Obviously, he's faster than Troy Aikman. He's not afraid to turn the corner and head downfield. He's a constant threat to any off, to any defense. A guy who can run and pass scares you more than a guy who just passes. That from Don James, the head coach of the Washington Huskies. As we take a look at the Trojans right now, you're looking at 84, Martin Chesley, who was on the receiving end of a two-point uh, conversion toss from Rodney Pete. Not long ago, and Pete 18 at 31 today for three touchdowns. On third down, Irvins can't get over. Good job by the Oregon State defense. Now here's a good question whether the Trojans are going to go again or are they going to kick the field goal? So we'll wait to see where they spot the football here, and that may help decide it. Good job by the Oregon State defense to rise to the occasion on that third down play. 7.40 now remaining in the football game. It's still 34 to 14 in favor of USC. Oregon State essentially ran an eight-man line in that last play, and we'll probably line up that same way. Let's see if the Trojans can blow it in and pick up that first down on possible touchdown. All right, the Trojans this time set up in a power eye formation. They've got the extra back Lockwood in there. Pete pitches to Lockwood. He cuts inside and scores for USC. You don't see that formation too often from the Trojans. The power eye formation, the additional running back right next to the eye. And it was Scott Lockwood who got that football. Well, when you're facing an eight-man line, the only thing you can do is pass, possibly, and then go outside. And they chose to go outside where they can find some success. And Lockwood just picks his way and goes in for the touchdown. That makes it 40-14 to 14 now in favor of USC. And the Trojans have safely put this one away. Quinn Rodriguez, the point after is good. And so SC really warming to the task in this fourth quarter. Boy, it looked as though, Mike, at one point at Oregon State perhaps was going to take the lead. They trailed SC by only six in this fourth quarter at 20 to 14. They got the ball, but on the first play after getting the ball, Eric Wilhelm threw the interception to Delmar Chesley. And from then on, it has been all USC. SC has been a juggernaut thereafter and has just scored every time they've gotten the ball. So the only way they could uh, do that is just run good, consistent offense. Don't forget to stay with us, ladies and gentlemen, right here on Prime Ticket. We've got the Pac-10 game of the week coming up next, the Cal Golden Bears against the Arizona Wildcats. We're going to throw it to Jeff Witcher and former Raiders coach Tom Flores, who are standing by at Arizona Stadium bring you all of the action of that one. Quinn Rodriguez getting ready to kick off. 
the Trojans who now lead it 41 to 14. It's cooling off, getting darker here all the time in Corvallis. And again, the kick comes deep across field to Brian Taylor, looking for a right side return. He is tripped up by Marvin Pollard and brought down at the 25 yard line. That's where Oregon State will get it first and 10. Oregon State will continue with Eric Wilhelm. Coach Craig Cook of Oregon State, all he wants to do now is, this is a matter of character. People don't fall down, do not give it up. Let's play our game and, and, and let's play for our next game, if not this one, because we just have to keep our minimum going. And, and you'll see Eric Wilhelm uh, run a very good offensive series this time. Wilhelm to Rob Thomas. Thomas, an open lane up the left side, but the hand that Chris Hale just got on him was enough to slow him up and stop him. You may have just heard a roar from this crowd a few moments ago, and what that was for was for this shocking upset at the Rose Bowl in Pasadena, where Washington State has defeated the top-ranked UCLA Bruins. The, the Bruins were down close with 20 seconds, uh, fourth and goal with 26 seconds to go, could not get the ball into the end zone. And uh, Washington State has defeated UCLA. Now that means that uh, things are gonna change here in terms of the national rankings this week in Notre Dame, I assume will uh, take over the number one spot. The Trojans, I would think, would move up to number two. There's a coach there that should not be discouraged. He has done, turned this program around. It's played, his team has played very well. He should be congratulated. And another big play by Pat Chafee. Across midfield and down to the 45-yard line. Mark Carrier brings it down. Pat Chafee's a good football player. You can tell he's a versatile guy. We've seen him all day. And here's a guy that last year broke his leg and to sit out the season. He certainly isn't showing any after effects. Is he? No, he isn't. He's six foot, two old three, and runs at very good speed, and he just won't go down unless you wrap him and bring him down. He says his hero is a former Trojan, Marcus Allen. Sorry about that, Mike. It's okay. Well, <laughs> being rushed from behind, he throws it up for grabs. Oh, it was dropped. It could have been a touchdown to Cordell, Cordell Sweeney. Oh. Sweeney couldn't hang on. Cordell Sweeney had nothing but 60 yards of AstroTurf in front of him. You know what he said, I don't get those shots that often, and now what I do, watch this. Oh, they're going to look at this at the team meeting, and he's going to be ripped beyond belief. Eric Wilhelm just threw up a wounded duck. The Cordell Sweeney is already <laughs> holding his hands as he goes to the turf. They're going to call him Iron Hand. Hey, that's linebacker hands for you. Yes, Iron Hand. Defensive Wilhelm, he's been under pressure in both plays. That last one, he was in the act of throwing when Sweeney had a chance to intercept it, and they, he, he lost his coordination. And this one, he was under pressure again. That's the only way you can stop this young man because he's a great quarterback. SC trying to wrap things up here today. Oregon State trying to get on the board one more time. Just over six minutes remaining in the football game. As Wilhelm throws over the middle. That's a good pass to Rob Thomas. He drilled it to Thomas, who's had a big day today. Rob Thomas, a guy with magnificent hands. Small hands, by the way. A holding penalty is going to knock that one out. 24-yard play. Now Rob Thomas walks off discouraged. 
probably get a few words from his dad after the game, though, of encouragement. There's another guy you know, Mike, Aaron yeah, Thomas. Aaron, Aaron was a great receiver, as I stated earlier in the broadcast, and his son is just as good. He could be a little faster than his father, and uh, we were talking to him before the game today, and he's very proud of Rob Thomas because Rob is leading the conference in receiving, and uh, it's just one great prospect. UCLA has lost 34 to 30 to Washington State. The Trojans will be all alone in first place in the Pac-10 with a victory today. The Trojans will go to 7 and 0 overall and 5 and 0 in the Pac-10. And they are now the only team without a defeat in the Pac-10. Oregon, by the way, was beaten today by Arizona State, and Oregon was in right behind. SC and UCLA. Wilhelm rolling to his left. Throws it out there. That one is picked off by Mark Carrier. Incomplete again. Incomplete pass. All right. Carrier looked as though he was going to have a shot at the interception. And again, it looked as though he was going to be able to take it a long way. He forces this. Wilhelm doesn't like to run, so he throws the ball cross field. That's the one thing you should not do. Mark Carrier comes across. The, defender, the uh, receiver for uh, the Beavers luckily came over and instructed him, made him drop the ball. Well, he instructed me a little, too. I couldn't see that ball slip out of Carrier's grasp. Wilhelm has thrown 52 passes today, a career-high 367 yards, but he has thrown three costly interceptions as well. Here's the punt. Cleveland Colder's going to let it drop. An Oregon State bounce inside the 20 and down to the 18 yard line where it is now. Of course, with the UCLA suffering that defeat today, that by no means takes the Bruins out of the Rose Bowl race. Let's see, we'll still have to beat the Bruins, right? It is 41 to 14 for USC over Oregon State. Trojans now could really start to work on that clock with 5.29 to go. And the Trojans have put Rodney Pete on the sidelines. Pat O'Hara comes in to make one of his rare appearances this year and run the offense the rest of the way for SD. Pat gives the ball to Calvin Holmes, and Holmes is brought down as he crosses the 20 up to the 23-yard line. There's Pat O'Hara. He's appeared in several games this year. But hasn't been able to take a, but hasn't been able to throw a pass. He's been in the game against the University of Arizona. He's in the game against Oregon. Late in the game like this, and he basically was handing the football off, but not throwing the passes. You've got a lot of fresh bodies in there, so don't be surprised if 